and judge. Recently, the chief executive officer of the Chicago Public Schools retained me to serve as an independent hearing officer in this matter. The purpose of this hearing is to enable me to receive public comment from concerned persons, specifically including representatives of the CEO, the school community, and interested members of the public. Uh, concerning the CEO's proposal to reassign the National Teacher Acad Teachers Academy's boundary, which is located at 55 West Cermak. <clears throat> Excuse me. Notice of the hearing was served on the school community, and notice of this hearing was also served on the public by newspaper publications. Pursuant to the said <coughs> notice, this hearing was scheduled to begin at 6 p.m., and let the record reflect that we are beginning at 6.02 p.m. Pursuant to the directives provided in the document entitled Procedures for Public Hearings on Proposed School Closure, Consolidation, Phase-Out, Reconstitution, or Reassignment Boundary Change, the hearing officer is solely responsible for conducting the hearing and is to conduct the hearing in an efficient and impartial manner. So there are some guidelines that I would ask everyone to follow here this evening and respect. This is a public hearing. Therefore, I will expect that all in attendance will show courteous, uh, respectful, and civil behavior. Please, if you have cell phones, turn them off at this time or put them on vibrate. Also, please turn off any other electronic devices at this time that could disturb these proceedings. This is an opportunity for public comment regarding the CEO's proposal. It is not an opportunity for questions and answers. During the course of the proceedings, please do not clap or cheer if you agree with a witness or a speaker's testimony. Similarly, do not boo or make any other negative verbalization if you are opposed to what a witness or a speaker has to say. Please understand, I am not an employee of the Chicago Public School System or the Board of Education. I will conduct an orderly hearing and I will show respect to each speaker and I ask that you respect me and the serious purpose of this meeting by honoring the guidelines I have just set forth. I will first receive comments from representatives from CPS concerning why the CEO is proposing to reassign National Teachers Academy's boundary. Then I will hear from any elected officials in attendance. Then those individuals who have signed up to speak this evening one hour prior to the start of the hearing and within 30 minutes after the start of the hearing will be called to speak primarily in the order in which they have signed in. So, testimony will be heard in this matter until all who have signed in to be heard by 5.30 p.m. have been heard or until we have reached 8.30 p.m., whichever occurs first. Individuals who have signed in to speak during the designated hours to do so will each be given two minutes to present their comments. This limitation is to ensure that we have sufficient time to hear all the speakers. There are three lights that are located on the podium, uh, on the top left side of the podium, right in front of me, which each speaker will speak from. The green light indicates that your two minutes have begun to run. The yellow light appears when you have 30 seconds remaining in your time, and the red light indicates that you, uh, your two minutes have expired. Please, respect the red light and return to your seat when it appears. Now, we have a very ambitious schedule this evening with many speakers, and I want everybody to have their opportunity to have their two minutes tonight, so I don't want to waste any time at all. So. I'm going to be calling three names at once. When I call the names, the first name that is called, you'll come to the podium. Number two and number three will line up behind the person at the podium, being respectful of, of not being in the space of the speaker, of course. Now, a certified court reporter is seated right in front of me. 
<clears throat> she is here to transcribe everything that is being said at this hearing. Please understand, she cannot record two people speaking simultaneously. Therefore, only one person can speak at a time, and I will determine who that person is. If I have a question for you while you're speaking, please stop speaking <clears throat> and do not begin to answer my question, even if you think you know what I'm going to be asking you, until I have finished the question. As you know, we have a sign and a Spanish interpreter here. If you see somebody come in that you know needs one or the other, I would ask you to please um, let them know that and let us know that. When you are called upon to speak, please step to the microphone at the podium in front of me. <clears throat> Excuse me. State your name for the record and spell your first and last names so the court reporter can take it down correctly. Please then state your affiliation. For instance, what school you're from, what community organization, if you're a parent, and so forth. I have been advised that there are one or more students who have signed in to speak this <coughs> evening. Illinois law prohibits the use of a student's name in these proceedings. It is not supposed to be in the transcript or in the record. So if a student comes forward, you will be assigned a letter, such as student A, student B, and so forth. Please, any students that are going to be addressing us tonight, do not state your name. When you are speaking, please do so in a conversational tone. The transcript of this proceeding, which I will be using to fulfill my duty, will not indicate any loud or aggressive language or movements. So please, all of us, help us all, each of us, to have a clear record of these proceedings. That is so very important, because that's what I take away from this hearing when I am doing the work that I am mandated to do. Following this public hearing, pursuant to state law and the rules promulgated by the board governing this hearing, I will prepare and submit to the CEO a written report that summarizes the public comments and documents received at today's hearing and determines whether the CEO complied with the requirements of state law and the final guidelines for school actions. The CEO will include my report and any recommendation submitted to the board. Finally, the record in this case will remain open until 5 p.m. tomorrow, Tuesday, January 30th, for persons to submit any written materials they want me to consider and make a part of the record. Those materials may be submitted in the following manner. By hand delivery to the attention of the CPS Law Department, at 42 West Madison, or by email using the following email address, transitions, T-R-A-N-S-I-T-I-O-N-S, -I -I at cps.edu. I'm going to repeat that again now. The record in this case will remain open until 5 o'clock tomorrow, Tuesday, January 30th for persons to submit any written materials they want me to consider and make a part of the record. Those materials may be submitted by either hand delivery to the attention of the CPS Law Department at 42 West Madison or by email using, using the following email address, transitions, T-R-A-N-S-I-T-I-O-N-S -I -I at cps.edu. So, if you're a speaker and your two minutes expire, and you still have more information you wish to make part of the record, write it down and submit it via hand delivery or email. <coughs> Materials submitted after 5 p.m. tomorrow, Tuesday, January 30th, will not be considered in my recommendation report and will not be included in the record of this hearing. I'll repeat this information at the end of the uh, hearing before we close. This evening we are joined by members of the Chicago Board of Education. Will each of you please be good enough to uh, raise your hand and state your name and title so that the members of the audience know who you are? Gabriella Brizuela, Assistant General Counsel for the Board of Education of the City of Chicago. Harold Chip Johnson, Chief of Family and Community Engagement in Education. James Despair. 
Spencer, Director of the School Demographic and Planning. So, we now um, have the uh, members of the Board of Education who have been identified, and that concludes my opening <coughs> comments. And Council, you may proceed. Thank you. Good evening, Your Honor. My name is Gabriella Brizuela. That's G-A-B-R-I-E-L-A-B-R-I-Z-U-E-L-A. -E -E and I'm an attorney in the Chicago Board of Education's Law Department. I am appearing before you today in connection with the proposal of a Chief Executive Officer or CEO of the Chicago Public Schools regarding a proposed reassignment boundary change of National Teachers Academy or NTA. At this time, I would like to present the CEO's Compiled Exhibit 1, a binder, binder of documents already tendered to you and being submitted for your consideration in support of the proposal. A copy of this binder is also available here in board chambers on the podium for public viewing. The binder consists of documentary evidence and written statements demonstrating that the CEO's proposal complies with the requirements of the Illinois School Code and the CEO's guidelines for school actions. Specifically, the written statements and documents demonstrate the following. At tab A, the binder includes notice letters to the parents and guardians of students, school staff members, and local school council members at NTA and South Loop, accompanied by draft transition plans. The notice letters and draft transition plans describe the basis of the proposal, explain how the proposal meets the criteria of the guidelines, and identify supports for a transition. Tab A also includes the notice of the scheduled community meetings and hearings published in the newspaper and affidavits attesting to the delivery of notice to NTA and South Loop parents or guardians, school staff, local school council members, and elected officials. Finally, tab A includes an affidavit attesting to proper publication of the draft guidelines for school actions on October 1st, the list of qualified independent hearing officers before November 1st, the finalized guidelines for school actions following a 21-day public comment period, the proposal before December 1st and at least 30 calendar days before the first community meeting. And finally, summaries from community meetings within five days after the meeting. At tab B, the binder includes the Illinois School Code provisions designating the powers of the board and outlining the process for school actions. This tab also includes the board's policy on the review and establishment of school attendance boundaries, the school quality rating policy, and the Chicago Public Schools Space Utilization Standards. Finally, tab B includes the CEO's guidelines for school actions for the 2017-2018 school year and the CEO's procedures for public hearings on proposed boundary reassignments. At tab C, the binder includes written evidence in support of the CEO's proposal. Tab C contains the transcripts and summaries from the two community meetings to elicit public comment held at a location convenient to both the NTA and South Loop school communities. Tab C also includes the written statement of Mr. Harold Chip Johnson and the various requests submitted in support of the proposal. Finally, tab C includes the written statement of Mr. James Dispenza regarding the space utilization with respect to the proposal. At this time, Your Honor, I request the CEO's compiled Exhibit 1 be admitted into the record. It will be so admitted, Mark, as Exhibit 1. Thank you. Your Honor, I would now like to have permission to call the CEO's first representative, Mr. Harold Chip Johnson, who will make a statement in support of the proposal. Mr. Johnson's statement is located in the binder at tab 19. Please. Thank you. Good evening, Your Honor. Good evening, sir. My name is Harold, H-E-R-A-L-D, Chip Johnson. I am the Chief Officer for the Office of Family and Community Engagement in Education for the Chicago Public Schools. I am responsible for the support and oversight of the FACE Management Team, the Office of the Local School Council Relations, Parent University Programs, and the Office of Faith-Based Initiatives. I have been the Chief Officer since July of 2017. By way of background, I have worked in public education for over 20 years in both educational and administrative capacities. I began my career as a high school teacher. I went to serve as an elementary school assistant principal high school associate principal and the network chief of schools for Chicago Public Schools before becoming chief officer for the Office of Family and Community Engagement in Education. I have a master's degree in education from DePaul University and I'm currently 
completing my doctoral degree in educational leadership at the National Lewis University. In November of 2013, after serving as deputy chief for the Garfield Humboldt Network, I became the chief of schools for Network 6. In that role, I provided support and oversight for schools within my network, including South Loop Elementary School. During my tenure as network chief, there have been two long outstanding educational <coughs> issues voiced by parents and community members in the near south side. The need for a continuum of high quality neighborhood school options for all students from pre-K through high school graduation and the overcrowding of South Loop Elementary School. A new building is being constructed in the South Loop area such that it will have greater capacity to accommodate K through eight students. The addition of the new building will create approximately 1,200 seats which would more than accommodate the combined student populations of South Loop and NTA. The addition of the new building will help address overcrowding at South Loop. The proposed reassignment boundary change of NTA helps to address the need for a neighborhood high school. High school students in the near south area, which includes Chinatown, Bridgeport, Armour Square, and Brownsville, have very few nearby high school options. Currently, 97% of high school students in the draft enrollment boundaries for the proposed high school choose not to attend their designated neighborhood high school, attending other schools across the city instead. Additionally, 69% of current high school students in the draft enrollment boundaries travel more than three miles to attend a high school of their choice. In response to requests for a neighborhood high school, CPS introduced a preliminary framework in May 2017 to expand high quality neighborhood options from pre-K through high school in the near south area by expanding the boundaries of South Loop and converting NTA to a neighborhood high school. This preliminary framework was designed to address key priorities in the near south community, including providing a continuum of high quality neighborhood school options for all students from pre-K through high school graduation, as well as building diverse school communities. Throughout this process, CPS has extensively engaged various stakeholders within the Near South community, including Alderman Pat Dowell, who represents the Near South community. Alderman Pat Dowell formalized her request for the reassignment boundary change and the need for a neighborhood high school in a letter dated July 17, 2017. Alderman Dowell's letter is located in your binder at tab 21. In the letter, Alderman Dowell recognizes this proposal as the most academically positive option for the Near South community. She highlights the fact that while both NTA and South Loop Elementary Schools provide a high quality education for their students, South Loop has been consistently rated as one of the top elementary schools in the city of Chicago. Thus, the reassignment boundary change would make it possible for all K-8 through students in the area to have the opportunity to enjoy that same academic rigor and access to a new state-of-the-art facility. The Alderman further acknowledges the lack of a neighborhood high school in the near south area and the problems it has caused for community residents. This proposal would now make it possible for students to have an easily accessible quality high school option in their community. In addition to the statement from Alderman Dowell, elected officials representing the affected communities have also recommended and urged the board to pursue a high school option. Specifically, Alderman Danny Solis believes this proposal addresses the need for families in the area, and Alderman Patrick D. Thompson has expressed the need to create a strong neighborhood high school option for students in the ward he represents. The Near South Planning Board also opined on the need for a neighborhood high school via a letter dated August 25, 2017. For a number of years, the Near South Planning Board voiced concerns regarding the need for a high school in the rapidly growing Near South Side. On August 23, 2017, CPS representatives presented a framework for a new high school and elementary school to their project review committee. The committee wholeheartedly welcomed the idea of a proposed high school in the Near South Side as it would enhance their community and give students the much needed opportunity to receive an education close to home. They also urged CPS to consider extending the boundary of South Loop further south to include the redevelopment of the Harold Ickes homes, ensuring that children returning or moving into these buildings also have access to South Loop. 
The CEO's proposal does exactly this and is in response to this request. The Near South Planning Board subsequently submitted a follow-up letter on January 22, 2018, commending CPS for proposing to extend the boundaries in response to their request. The Near South Planning Board's letters are located in your binder at tab 22. Moreover, a request for the proposal in the form of a petition was also presented to the Board of Education at its July 26, 2017 board meeting. A copy of the petition signed by parents and community members of the Dearborn Homes is located in your binder at tab 23. The petition urges CPS to convert MTA to a new neighborhood high school. The petition further affirms that the addition of a high school with quality educational opportunities would suit the needs of current and future students. The proposed reassignment boundary change would address this request. In June of 2017, additional requests in support of the proposal were also received via the process outlined in the CEO's guidelines, including 270 letters in support of the proposal signed by members of the PUTAC Center in Chinatown. The letters from members of the PUTAC Center are located in your binder at tab 24. Specifically, these letters express support for the proposal to convert the current MTA facility into a neighborhood high school. CPS received feedback in support and against the preliminary, preliminary framework. As a result of this feedback and in response to the request it received, CPS amended its initial proposal to better serve the community. In particular, CPS focused on creating a more gradual conversion timeline for MTA students so that the majority of existing MTA students could continue their academic careers at MTA as the high school expands. Moreover, based on requests from community members, CPS further adjusted its proposal to expand South Loop's boundaries to incorporate the entirety of NTA's current boundary. As part of this process, CPS formed the Near South Community Leadership Steering Committee, comprised of community leaders, educators, and parents to gather feedback and discuss the transition supports that would be needed to successfully implement this proposal. If this proposal is approved, CPS will continue to engage the steering committee in the implementation phase and in the development of plans for the new high school. If NTA transitions to South Loop, they will be attending a higher performing school based on the CEO's guidelines for school actions. The CEO's guidelines for school actions define a higher performing school as a school that received a higher level on the school quality rating policy, which we refer to as the SQRP, for the 2016-2017 school year. Under the SQRP, located in your tab, in your binder, tab 10, each school receives an annual rating based on its performance on a variety of student outcome measures, including standardized test scores and student attendance. District-wide, schools designated level one plus are the highest performing, and schools designated level three are the lowest performing. NTA and South Loop both received a level one plus rating based on their performance during the 2016-2017 school year. However, in accordance with the CEO's guidelines, when schools are designated the same rating, the higher performing school is determined based on a variety of metrics, including multi-year value added outcomes and standardized test score attainments. While CPS does not calculate district-wide multi-year value added results anymore. It does, however, compile standardized test score attainments in accordance with the guidelines. South Loop meets the definition of higher performing school because according to the most recently available data, it performed higher on the majority of the metrics. Charts summarizing this data are located in your binder also at tab 25. CPS is committed to supporting the transition of current MTA students through graduation and has budgeted approximately $3.5 million to support this transition. The draft transition plan included within the notice letters to parents, staff, and local school members outlines the various supports that would be offered if this proposal is approved and was developed based on recommendations from the Near South Community Leadership 
Steering Committee. A summary of this proposal and transition supports is located in your binder at tab 26. To highlight a few, these supports include a budget for a variety of events and activities designed to support community building and culture integration. The creation of a joint culture and climate team comprised of staff, parents, and student representatives from NTA and South Loop. Principal and school-based transition coordinators to assist with the implementation of new programs and practices, administrative support, and other supports identified by both schools and leadership. The implementation of restorative practices, professional development and training opportunities for school staff, and shuttle bus service for NTA students who transition to South Loop Elementary School. In conclusion, the proposed reassignment of NTA's boundary meets the criteria of the Chief Executive's Officer's guidelines for school actions because it is a proposal requested by parents or community members via the process to request proposals outlined in the guidelines. Specifically, we have heard the request for this proposal from public officials and parents and community members in the form of petitions, emails, and statements at community meetings. This proposal is also consistent with the guidelines because the resulting space utilization after the reassignment boundary change will not exceed the enrollment efficiency range as defined by the CPS space utilization standards. You will hear next from my colleague, James Dispenser, who will provide information regarding the resulting space utilization with respect to this proposal. Thank you, Your Honor, and this concludes my statement. Thank you. Your Honor, I would now like to ask permission to call the CEO's next representative, Mr. James Dispensa, who will make a statement in support of the proposal. Mr. Dispensa's statement is located in the binder at tab 20. Thank you. Sir, you may proceed. Thank you. Good evening, Your Honor. Good evening. My name is James Dispensa, and I'm the Director of Demographic Analysis and Planning for the Chicago Public Schools. My responsibilities include undertaking school demographic studies, enrollment projections, and the monitoring of space utilization of the public school facilities throughout Chicago. I've been in this position since October 2004. The CEO has asked me to appear at this hearing today to convey to you, the parents, staff, and school community of NTA and South Loop Elementary Schools, as well as interested members of the public in attendance, information relevant to the proposal to reassign the attendance boundaries of NTA. This proposal involves the expansion of South Loop's boundaries to encompass the entirety of NTA's current boundary and gradually converting NTA from an elementary school to a high school. Specifically, the proposal involves the reassignment of NTA students in kindergarten through third grade to South Loop in the 2019-20 school year, while giving students in fourth grade and above the option to remain at NTA through graduation or to transfer to South Loop. The CEO may propose a reassignment boundary change that results in the reassignment of current students from one school to one or more other schools if the school's principal, parents, or community members have requested that a reassignment boundary change proposal be considered and the resulting space utilization after the reassignment boundary change will not exceed any affected school's enrollment deficiency range as defined by CPS's space utilization standards. As you've already heard, this proposal is consistent with the CEO's actions, the CEO's guidelines for school actions for reassignment boundary changes, because it is a proposal formally requested by the members of the community, including parents and community representatives. Moreover, this proposal is consistent with the guidelines because, as I will detail for you, the resulting space utilization after the reassignment boundary change will not exceed the enrollment efficiency ranges defined by CPS's space utilization standards. NTA is currently located at 55 West Cermak Road and serves 723 students in grades kindergarten through eighth in addition to its pre-K program. South Loop serves 780 students in grades kindergarten through eighth in two different facilities known as the South Loop Main Building and the South Loop Branch Building. If the proposed reassignment boundary change is approved, NTA would decrease its grade offering from K through 8 currently to grades 4 through 9 in the 2019-20 school year. 
Each school year thereafter, NTA would adjust its grade offering such that by the 2024-25 school year, it would offer only high school grades 9 through 12. And for clarity, Your Honor, I will describe the expected NTA grade offerings in each of the following seven school years should the Board approve this proposal. Next school year, 2018-19, NTA would offer grades K-8 through in addition to its pre-K program, so that's no change from the current school year. In the 2019-20 school year, NTA would offer grades 4 through 9. In the 2020-21 school year, NTA would offer grades 5 through 10. In the 2021-22 school year, NTA would offer grades 6 through 11. In the 2022-23 school year, NTA would offer grades 7 through 12. In the 23-24 school year, 8 through 12. And then finally, in the 2024-25 school year, NTA would offer grades 9 through 12. Over the summer of 2019, the district expects to complete construction of the new South Loop School Building at 1601 South Dearborn, which is located approximately one half mile north of NTA. This 120,000 square foot four story elementary school, together with the current South Loop Building at 1212 South Plymouth and the South Loop Early Childhood Center Branch at 1915 South Federal, will accommodate the combined enrollment of South Loop and those students from NTA who choose to transfer. Again, in the 2019-20 school year, the rising 4th through 8th grade students can remain enrolled in NTA through graduation or transfer to South Loop. To understand the enrollment efficiency range of a facility, CPS uses its space utilization standards, which is located in your binder at tab 12. CPS provides an enrollment efficiency range for elementary schools based primarily on the total number of instructional classrooms available in the facility. There will be a total of 69 classrooms available at the South Loop Elementary Main and Branch facilities. The ideal capacity of these facilities will be approximately 1590, that's 1590 students, and any enrollment within the efficiency range of 1113 through 1749 would be considered efficient. The projected enrollment range of South Loop for the 2019-20 school year, should the board approve this proposal, is between 1,200 and 1,500 students. And this projected enrollment range is within the enrollment efficiency range of the new South Loop. Furthermore, the proposed boundary reassignment change will have a positive impact on the racial composition and stability of these schools. The option of maintaining the status quo offers a disadvantage over this proposal, and the projected increase in racial ethnic diversity of both schools is included in the report <coughs> at tab 27. While other alternatives were examined, no alternatives affected the resulting racial ethnic distribution of students as positively as the proposed reassignment boundary change. Thank you, Your Honor. This concludes my statement. Thank you. Your Honor, this concludes the presentation in support of the CEO's proposal. If you have any additional questions, we'll be available to answer them. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Thank you. No other questions at this time. <coughs> at this time, we will begin with the uh, public comments. Uh, remember what I said earlier about the fact that I'm going to call three names. The first name will go to the podium for your two minutes. The other, uh, in the order that I call you, numbers two and three, will line up behind uh, the person at the podium uh, so that we can not lose time, so that we won't lose time between speakers, okay? Having said that, Yvonne Franklin, Francine Washington, and Sheila Garrett. And remember, if you are a student, um, you cannot put your name on the record. These cards do not indicate, other than one that I've seen, um, who the students are. So I may call the name of, of a student. The student will line up like the other speakers. However, once at the podium, students do not give your name. I'll give you a student designation. Thank you. Please carry on. Ma'am? Good evening, Your Honor. Good evening. My name is Yvonne Franklin. I'm a, a guardian of a sixth grade CPS student. Uh, I'm the chairperson of our LSC, the Drake, John D. Drake School. Um, I'm also a representative of 67 community members that gave me permission to represent them with permission. Um, 
I'm in favor of the proposal. I think it's a, a would be a benefit to the student in general, although my sixth grade may choose the, another option. Um, our board, LSE board, chose to support this, this proposal also, unanimously. We think it would be a benefit for the students and respectfully, Your Honor, we would insist that Drake School and Chinatown be included in the proposal going forward. We feel that our students are worthy of such an opportunity, and it's right and good that this proposal be instituted. Take your time. I'm sorry. And, and I have had the opportunity to hear public com comments from the opposition, and which includes their wish that they be included in the plan going forward, although they do not recommend that this plan be instituted. So um, it might not be the majority, but I have frequently heard the comments in private and public that they wish to be uh, guaranteed a seat in the school. So I believe some of them think that it's right and good also. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Francine Washington, please. Excuse me, I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. Um, I am reminded, uh, I'm sorry, Miss Washington, just step back for a minute. Yeah, just step right back. I'm sorry. Um, uh, elected officials, um, we allow them uh, priority in terms of the comments. And is it uh, Alderman, you're with us? Yes. Please, if you would be good enough. And I apologize to everybody in the audience as well. I made that clear at the beginning that, that we would have um, elected officials beforehand. Falderman, I apologize to you as well. Please okay. carry on. Thank you, Your Honor, for giving me time to speak this <clears throat> evening about this uh, Near South Educational Plan. As the Alderman of the Third Ward, my communities include uh, Bronzeville, Fuller Park, the South Loop, and Washington Park. The needs of my students are as diverse as the ward itself. Um, I've been an alderman of a portion of the South Loop since 2007, and in 2015, after the remap, I became the alderman of a larger portion of the South Loop, stretching from Roosevelt Road to the Stevenson Expressway and beyond. Shortly after officially taking on this expanded area, I began speaking with residents of the area and attending meetings to hear their concerns, the concerns of my new constituents. Uh, consistently, I heard two things from most people I spoke to. Number one, I want to send my children to South Loop Elementary School, but the school is overcrowded. And or, number two, the community does not have a neighborhood high school and I can't get my kid in Jones. So in 2015, I began to think about solutions and work <coughs> earnestly on these matters. Working with my community and with CPS, the board is now considering an important improvement to the educational infrastructure in the South Loop neighborhood of my ward. This would include the creation of a new elementary school, which is already under construction, and the establishment of a new neighborhood high school for an area that has not had a true local high school over generations. The two-part proposal called the Near South Educational Plan is the only viable option that offers the necessary increase in elementary school seats to deal with the overcrowding in the South Loop, as well as deliver a badly needed neighborhood high school to the area. To meet these needs, the Neighborhood Teachers Academy building has been proposed to become the site of the neighborhood high school. As you know, this has become increasingly contentious for the families at NTA. In response to their concerns, the proposal was modified to significantly allow NTA students to stay and graduate from NTA, even if they don't live in the boundary, and then go on and attend the new high school with their classmates. A transition team you heard has been put in place made up of parents and community members from NTA and the South Loop 
to hash out the important issues regarding the merger of these two schools. These are just a few of the many changes that have been made to the proposal in response to community concerns. But the bottom line is for students who live in the South Loop, regardless of where they live in the South Loop, and regardless of their race or their income, they'll be able to send their student to a high-performing elementary school and have the ability to send them to a high school in their neighborhood where there was not one before. This, Your Honor, is a vast improvement. Also, it rights a wrong from a previous administration that separated the South Loop community at 18th Street, forcing the majority black low-income students who live in the South Loop into NTA. This was very wrong. Now with this proposal, there will be one school for the entire neighborhood, not separated by racial boundaries that will provide the highest quality elementary education for all students, regardless of, as I said before, race, socioeconomic, and other demographic characteristics. To those that say this is a racist plan, I say it is not. This plan will increase both the racial and economic diversity of the consolidated South Loop Elementary School. And for those people who claim that the neighborhood high school is just a grab by rich white people, please look at the boundaries for the high school. The high school will be a majority minority enrolled school and will be one of CPS most diverse high schools. This proposal creates a learning environment that benefits all races, all students, all incomes. In 2015, when I started down this path, I told CPS that I wanted a plan that was inclusive of the diverse <coughs> residents and needs of the South Loop, and this plan could not be a solution for one group over another. This current plan, plan Your Honor, is fair. Um, I think I will conclude here. I just want to thank everyone from my community who worked hard on this um, and contributed to uh, these ideas. I want to thank uh, Dr. Janice Jackson, uh, uh, Jim Dispenza, and Chip Hastings. I, I, I'm having a bad day. <laughs> and uh, for their vision and leadership on these issues. And Your Honor, I thank you for the time that you're going to take to really delve into the issues and hope that you will support this new plan. Thank you. Thank you, Alvin. Now then, Francine Washington, where are you? Francine, where is Did we, did we lose Francine? No. The high school? Yeah. They're being decided. My name, uh, thank you, Your Honor, but I should have went to full pet because I was elected also. Pardon me? I was elect, I'm an elected official also. I had to put out petitions, get designed, and get in the campaign. I had 21,000 people to vote for me. And then, after being elected, I was also appointed by the mayor to be a commissioner. So I'm an elected official also. Well, your time is running, so if you'd be good enough yes. to spell your first and last Francine name. Francine Washington. Francine, F R A N C I N E. Washington, W A S H I N G T O N. Start two minutes again from now, please. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hold on just a second. There you go. Okay. My name is Francine Washington. I do agree that we need another high school. What I disagree on is the boundaries. Before the NTA got there, there was family public house on those spots. We had to fight and beg the people to tear the house down in order to be on the NTA because they need a public school. I realize time has brought about a change, but the boundaries need to change. Everybody's hollering, I agree with the boundaries. Nobody have yet stated what the boundaries was, like it's a government secret. Can I please have someone tell me what the boundaries are? Because from, from my understanding, it's down from 24th Street to the north, to Loop. I thought the boundaries should start from 39th Street. It was just no boundaries. Kids should be able to go to whatever school they want to go to while we put boundaries on it. Plus, we haven't even built up on the land that's there. By the time we get to high school to get filled up, the people that's come back to the land and land down the street into the east and to the west of it will have nowhere to go. So I would like I would like the boundary to start like at 39th. South at 39th. They can go north from 39th, but uh, you have to cut us in to cut it out. We don't want to sacrifice for the NTA, now the upcoming high school. This is not a question and answer period. This is the time for I you know to it's not. give me your, your comments for the rest My of the My problem time. is we need to change the boundaries. No one has said it. They talk about the boundaries over and over again. No one actually, they got it in black and white. 
No one actually told anyone who what are the boundaries. Did you hear it? You might have read it, but did you hear anyone tell what the boundaries were? I know you didn't write a question. All I want to know, the boundaries need to start south. It can't start at the loop, from the loop to the loop. From the lake to the, I have, I have, between the boundaries talking about now, I actually have over 4,352 constituents that I'm responsible for. Not count, that's the head of households. Not counting you, they go make about 12,000 people. I have Bridgeport, the Maryville, here you, Ickes, all the way from the, from the lake, all the way over to Cicero. Anything in that area from 24th to... Your time, your time is up. If there's more information, you can uh, submit it by five o'clock tomorrow. Thank you so much for your time here. Thank you, but I need the boundaries. I still have something stuck. I need the boundaries. Sheila Garrett, and before you begin, Ms. Garrett, I'm going to ask uh, Manjean Wiley, James Miller, and Rosemary Garrett to line up, please, and thank you. Go ahead, please, ma'am. Hi, my name is Sheila Garrett. Spell your first and last name, please. Sheila's S H E I L A Garrett G A R R E T T. Thank you. I just want to commend Dr. Jackson and the board on getting a high school in South Loop. It's been 45 years since I've been in that area, and it hasn't been a high school. I think the kids deserve to have a quality, standard, all the opportunities that they have on the north side and south loop. They deserve that. And when people get up here to talk about uh, not having a high school in the community, I would tell them to sit down somewhere and what about the kids? Kids can adapt fast. Older people can't. Teenagers, young parents, they can't adapt. Stop worrying about your children you have not had yet. Worry about the kids that are there and give them exactly what they need. And that's a top education in high school, in a community where they can be at home, where they know. Thank you. Thank you very much. Manjing, Wiley. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Manner, M-A-N-E-R, last name is Wiley, W-I-L-E-Y. -E -Y. I represent public housing, and I was one of the people that supported NTA being built. My thing is, I strongly support the high school. First of all, a school, a building don't make the school. It's the people in there. If these teachers saying they want to teach our kids, show me. Put your money where your mouth at. There's all these grammar school, a new brand new grammar school being built. What's the problem? If you're really interested, really interested, and really strongly want to support teaching our kids and keeping them in grade level one, turn your rear end and go to the new school. I transferred from Haines School to South Blue to NTA. Guess what? There was no high school. Ask me, what's the percentage of kids other nationality, other than African American, go to Dunbar, go to Phillip, or go to Tilden. Not, you might have 1%, maybe 1% of the nationality go there. They would change their address and take their kids elsewhere. I raised six kids at Hilliard. I raised 15 grandkids. My granddaughter's first one walked through NTA. I fought hard for NTA. I'm gonna fight hard and make it a high school. My kids deserve a good high school. Will they allow their kids to go to Dunbar, Phillip, or Tilden? I don't think so, because I know this for a fact. Now, how come my kid can't be at level one high school? Other people came late after we tore our bricks down to build this school. You don't know the swear. My husband died while I supported this school, fighting hard to build NTA. Bricks don't make a school. Thank you it's very okay. much. Thank you all. Uh, James Miller. Thank you, Your Honor. My name is James Miller, M-I-L-L-E-R. I'm a South Loop resident and NTA parent. The role of CPS should be to improve education, not property values.
The achievement of all students should be the goal. This plan is not trying to achieve that goal. No MTA community involvement was in this plan before May of 2016. Alderman Dow did not include us in any of the pre-conversations. This was pushed as a backroom deal by PDNA, a backroom deal bragged about by John Ducobe, PDNA board member, at the first town hall meeting in May. The same man who in 2012 bragged that the SLE scores improved because they redrew the boundaries and dropped the low income population from 91% to 37% in a crane of the crane's article from March 2012. This plan was pushed by a small group of property owners to get a temporary price increase, not to improve educational outcomes for children. By removing the low income children from the test population of the neighborhood high school over time, they are trying to improve their property values. A CPS employee who has a personal economic interest that would benefit from the testimony and support of a plan is in violation of the Illinois Ethics Code and for them to be involved in this case. As such, the NTA community calls on James Dispenser to recruit himself from this case given his economic interest as a property holder in the region that is projected to realize economic, specifically real estate appreciation as a result of this proposal. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Um, we have Rosemary Garrett. And lining up behind her is going to be William Woodley, Erica Clark, and Scott Clark. Please. Thank you. Carry on, please, ma'am. My name is Rosemary Garrett, R-O-S-E-M-A-R-Y, Garrett, G-A-R-R-E-T-T. -T. I always say I like the popcorn, too. There you go. Making me hungry. <laughs> um, I would like to just urge all of the decision makers in this process to please use your right reasoning and good governance. Because what has gone on prior to this meeting has <clears throat> been a lot of hate. Someone who actually put out a flyer that encouraged the Hunger Games for the people who supported this project, which I don't think is a value any school wants. And I agree with the previous speakers that it's not the building, it's not the block, it's the people inside that make a school great. I actually was a certified Chicago public school teacher a million years ago. I substituted for the first couple of months when I graduated from Chicago Teachers College and I saw that it's the people inside the building that make a school great. And I applaud the parents on both sides of this issue who want the best education for their kids. I've lived in the Bronzeville area since 1999. I am not a racist, but I think that the school, the high school is needed in this community. And it's the right thing to do. Thank you. Uh, is it William Woodley? Oh, sorry. <clears throat> sorry, got it. Uh, good evening and thank you for this opportunity, Your Honor. Would you spell your last name, sir, please? Yep. My name is Will Woodley. Last name is W O O D L E Y. Thank you. I'm the development director for the Community Builders Chicago office. We are a nonprofit committed committed to helping create and support mixed income communities. Personally, I'm also the father of two small children and in myself trying to figure out how to, get them the, uh, how to get them the best education possible as they grow up in Chicago. So I understand that tonight's topic is both challenging and emotionally charged. Because I believe it will benefit thousands of children in the long run, particularly those from disadvantaged, lower income families, I am here to speak in support of the CPS proposal. The Community Builder's mission is to help build and sustain communities where people of all incomes can achieve their full potential. Providing access to the highest quality education possible is a key goal for our work. We are the developer of Oakwood Shores in Bronzeville, where for 15 years we have helped to create a high quality mixed income neighborhood. We now will be doing the same as the developer for the remaining vacant blocks of the former Harold Ickes homes, which are just east of NTA. 
There we will help build a mixed income neighborhood that includes hundreds of homes for CHA families and other families with lower incomes. A top priority will be securing access to educational and economic opportunity for those families. The work the Community Builders has done for decades across the country and in Chicago informs us, that, uh, informs us on the importance of providing quality neighborhood schools and embracing diversity in order to build strong mixed income communities. CPS's current proposal will give the families we directly serve, as well as, as, well as hundreds of others, access to high quality public, uh, public education, pre-K through high school, and what will be one of the most diverse student populations in the city. Sir, I'm going to have to ask you to, yep. uh, your time is up. Submit it um, by tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Erica Clark. Hi, my name is Erica Clark. Uh, I'm with a group called Parents for Teachers, a citywide. Please spell your last name. Erica Clark, C L A R K. Thank you. With Parents for Teachers, a citywide parent group. Um, we're here to talk about why we believe the proposed action for NTA <coughs> not meet the law or CPS's own school action guidelines, which we believe is what your job is here tonight is to look at the evidence, consider it all, and write a recommendation as to whether or not the proposal meets meets those guidelines. We believe that the facts tonight will show that, that it doesn't and that you should recommend against this proposal. First of all, it's not a boundary change, okay? Think about it this way. Um, if this proposal goes through, NTA will close. It will still be a school, but it will not be an elementary school. If you go home, if you stop at Aldi's on your way home tonight and it, you buy groceries, and then you go back to Aldi's next week to, to pick something up, and it's a Target or a Payless, it's still a store, but it's not a grocery store. All these has been closed. NTA is being closed with this proposal. And as such, if you should consider the, the, the guidelines for school closings, not a boundary change. So what do the school closing guidelines say? They say that first of all, the students need to go to a higher performing school. Now despite Mr. Johnson's mental gymnastics here, NTA has the highest level a school can achieve. It's a level one plus school. There's no higher rating. South Loop is a great school, it has the same rating, but it's not significantly better than NTA. So it, 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 this proposed action fails to meet that guideline. Um, the second question is, is this a community supported proposal? When CPS announced these plans, they said they were only gonna consider uh, at school actions that were supported by the community. There is a, a, a tab on the CPS website that says community generated proposals. NTA is not listed as one of them. I think you're going to hear tonight that the NTA community, the parents, the staff, and the students at that school are opposed to this plan. They did not generate this plan. They do not want this plan. And as such, that is the community that should take center stage and whose voices should be Thank you. I'm going to have to ask you to submit whatever you'd like by 5 o'clock tomorrow. Thank you very much. The next three speakers, if you'd line up, please. Tanya, is it Skelton? And um, Anisha? Uh, Foreman and Amara en Enya, and I apologize up front for anybody's name who I mispronounced. I really do. Sir, carry on, please. Good evening, Your Honor. My name is Scott Clark, S-C-O-T-T-C-L-A-R-K. Thank you. <clears throat> I've been a resident of the South Loop Senate for almost 18 years now. I have twin girls that are currently in seventh grade at a CPS school and uh, living in the neighborhood, having children, going through the process. Um, We've, been, we've seen dozens of our friends' families move out, primarily because of the lack of educational opportunities. I understand it's a difficult transition for the folks that are at NTA now, but myself, my wife, and a lot of our neighbors strongly support this, uh, converting the NTA. The, the, trans, the amended transition plan, I think, will be helpful. Um, CPS is known for years with the growth in the South Loop, we're gonna need a neighborhood high school. And um, the current plan is not perfect, and uh, I'm, I'm sure it's, and I've, I've been to several other community meetings, and I know the NTA supporters are very loud and very vocal, but at the end of the day, the greater good of the community, I think, outweighs uh, the emotional attachment that they have to their school. And we strongly, and as much, and hopefully, my daughters uh, will be able to attend their expression in 2019. And, um, it's not perfect, but as uh, Abraham Lincoln reportedly said, a, uh, a good settlement or a good resolution is when everybody walks away a little unhappy. Uh, we're not 
it's not the best solution, but I think it's the only solution that makes sense at this time going forward. We strongly support it. I think the diversity that the uh, proposed boundaries and transition will allow will uh, provide greater, greater educational opportunities for all of the children currently in the neighborhood and in the future, particularly given the growth of the South Loop community. So we would strongly support uh, the uh, proposal. We applaud the alderman's support of it and the other community uh, leaders who do support the plan. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Come forward. Anisha, is it? No, I'm Tanya. Oh. You, Tanya, yes, I beg your pardon, yes. Indeed. <laughs> Carry on. Good evening. My name is Tanya Skelton, T-A-N-Y-A, Skelton, S-K-E-L-T-O-N. I am a parent at NTA. I am here to stand with NTA. I oppose the plan to close NTA. My son is a first grader in the neighborhood program as we live in the boundary. He loves his school, he loves his friends, he loves learning and is excited every day to be at school. The culture of the school is amazing. My husband and I consciously decided to send our son to a majority black school that is in line with our values and feel diversity is important. We have not been disappointed. I told my son I would be talking tonight to save his school. I asked him if there was anything he wanted me to say. His response, go NTA. Several friends that are at South Loop Elementary, or I should say several parents of South Loop Elementary kids are against this proposal. Many NTA families, or most of us, are against this proposal. Who is for this plan? You should strongly consider other options. There has to be a better plan. There is a better plan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is this Anisha? No, maybe I missed, is it um, Anisha? Brothers, Foreman. Okay, we'll put that aside. And you are Amara Enya. Yes. All right, I'm going to give three more names. Then. Um, can I give an address? Would you be offended if I give an address? To see if it's you? Well, I'm going to take that as a no. Then it looks here like A N M I S A. Thank you so much. Let's carry on with you, ma'am. You are Amara? Yes. Okay. Good evening. My name is Amara Enya, A-N-A-R-A-E-N-Y-I-A. I am a resident and organizer. On my background, I have a master's degree in education, a law degree, and a PhD in education policy. For context for this conversation, um, I've had the privilege of working with community groups that have experienced a lot of the systematic destabilization and disruption that often occurs and affects the most marginalized communities in the city. I was also one of the premier uh, primary consultants on the Ivan Jenner merger, which is, is being executed as we speak. So it's another example of communities who are grappling with what to do in transformative spaces and how we can talk about issues of diversity and equity and so on and so forth. I'm here representing a group of colleagues, both professionally but also in the community, who were tasked with serving on an equity committee to assess this proposal, not just through the lens of diversity, but through the lens of equity, which is absolutely important, especially when we're considering groups that have historically been marginalized when school actions have been taken. This group has met uh, repeatedly and also engaged in conversations with community members. And a few of the points that we just wanted to highlight in this proposal is that number one, as a matter of policy and practice, we must counter any policy decision making that undercuts quality schools. And more specifically, black and brown spaces should never be expendable. And yet all too often they are. Again, this issue of equity. This group, is tasked with thinking creatively about how we leverage existing resources and what kinds of investments we can make that will mitigate the disruptive factors that are at play whenever a school action, such as a closing in this case, occurs. And so, after deliberation and conversations with the community, we have developed a proposal that assesses the current landscape and the current proposal, but also puts on the table an alternative that requires an investment in uh, existing high schools in the area, in particular Dunbar High School. I have to, I have to ask you to, your time is up, and we have 90 more people to go. 
So if you'd be good enough, submit it before five o'clock tomorrow. The please. proposal has been submitted. Thank you so much. And then I'm going to call, it looks like Wendy, Wendy Millen. Wendy Miller. Miller, I beg your pardon. Ruby Miller and Pearl Miller. Would you please say your name and spell your first, middle, and last name, please? A N I K A Anika, last name Matthews, hyphen Feldman Matthews, M A T T H W S, hyphen Feldman F E L D M A N. I am an NTA supporter, I'm against the plan. The plan assumes many things. It assumes that CPS is obligated to give a third high school in South Loop. <coughs> Regardless of the testimony you've heard, there is a neighborhood high school already assigned to the area. That is Phillips. Phillips has 1,134 seats that are available right now. CPS has claimed that this is not a high quality school. However, it is sending Inglewood kids, if their closures go through, to Phillips. If it's good enough for Phillips, it's, it's a, if it's good enough for the Inglewood kids, it should be good enough for South Loop Elementary families. And again, 1,134 seats are available right now. Also, we have Perspectives. Perspectives is a charter school, but it also receives funding from CPS. They can add a neighborhood component to this school like they do Jones Prep. Again, that's many seats that could be available right now. Also, integration. We have heard a lot about how this plan is about bringing diversity and integration. However, Dr. Jackson has said in a board meeting that some of NTA classrooms are black, and that is a problem. However, in the district, there are 278 schools that are all black. They are not a problem for CPS. They're not doing anything about them. They're just calling out NTA for being majority black. That is a problem. Also, what community has this matrix? What community has an elementary school, elementary kids sharing space with high school kids? That is not done. There's a difference in their development as well as their behavior. That's why it's not done. CPS hasn't even shown us where this is done in the district currently, having elementary kids share space with high school kids. That is against the best interest of any NTA, um, the NTA community in any community housing elementary kids. That's why it's not done. Thank you. Um, your time is up. Thank sure. you very much. I also already have my packet ready to submit to you. Um, are you able to accept that or no? Okay. Thank you very much. Wendy Miller. Good evening. Hi there. Uh, Wendy Miller, M-I-L-L-E-R. <coughs> Um, CPS proposal is not one of a boundary reassignment. It is the forced closure of a top-rated school that is doing everything right for our children. This proposal will ruin the educational continuity of over 700 elementary school children. Expecting NTA families to sacrifice their school for the benefit of other communities is inconsiderate. The needs of one community are not more important than the needs of another. There is no way to recreate or preserve the family and community we have at NTA, a culture that knows its students, families, and all of their backgrounds. If our children are moved to an 1,800 student, rebuilding elementary school campus, they will suffer. I have had children at both South Loop Elementary and NTA. We left South Loop Elementary because the attitude of the administration and staff did not reflect the values I expect my children to learn well from. My child was overlooked in the classroom. NTA staff knows my children and the rest of our children beyond the classroom, and this knowledge helps our school provide our students with a great education. We take care of our families, and all children are valued equally. Students are empowered to speak with their own strong and confident voice. NTA ignites momentum. We are building future leaders that are culturally aware and strive for a just society, which we need. NTA is special in a way that should be a beacon in CPS for families that need a better school opportunity. This proposal sacrifices a very special, very unique community to, to create the city's largest elementary school and disperses kids to a giant three-building campus. This proposal is not the best CPS can do for our, all of our communities. They avoided in input from NTA even before they made their plan public, and they should reassess this plan because there are better options that the larger community could put forth. Thank you. Uh, uh, do we have students now? Um, do we have, ma'am? Yes. You were done? Do yes. we have students in front of us? Yes. Whose name begins with an R, first name begins with an R? Okay, student, your student A, would you please begin, please, student A? Okay. Do you want me to pass or do you have? Okay. Since 2013, 
two, my mom and other parents have added to the squirrel gardens. Gardening at NTA is done by parents and teachers. We get to go out of the classroom and learn about growing and harvesting vegetables that <coughs> Some of our classrooms learn how to make compost and plant seedings in raised beds that we build with our classroom. Two of our teachers took a training class in order for us to pick and serve our vegetables in the cafeteria. This past fall, the, the little kids have picked parsley, collards, kale, and Swiss chard to have in our school lunch. One of our moms is a master gardener. We know she knows a lot about growing plants and help do, and helps kids who haven't planted anything before. We have volunteers who help with classrooms when they when they plant plants and pick vegetables to grow. My mom helps with that. Over the summer, we help take care of the gardens and families can come to pick vegetables. Two years ago, we planted a colony garden to help them. Thank you very much, Student A. Are we on Student B now? children could check out books. We also have had book fairs. Our parents have helped our teachers by buying books at the fair from a wish list. The library is awesome because kids get to meet people in our community. Our neighbors at Queen Chapel, the, old, the oldest African American church in Chicago, is near NTA. I go to visit Queen Chapel on a field trip. The men of Queen came to NTA to read books to the little kids. That way they get to know our neighbors. That way they get to know our neighbors. They are working on opening the bigger kids' libraries so that I will be able to check books out too. <coughs> that complete the statement. Thank you so very much, <coughs> student B. Appreciate it. Tina Felstein, Catherine McKenzie, Paul Kent. Please. Good evening. Good evening, Your Honor. My name is Tina Feldstein. That's T-I-N-A. Last name up is in Frank, E-L-D-S-T-E-I-N. I'm here today representing one of the most active community <coughs> organizations in the near south side, the South Loop. It's called the Prairie District Neighborhood Alliance. I'm the president and founding member. Um, our board unanimously supports this plan um, this conversation didn't start in 2017 or 16 or 15. This conversation about how are we going to address the needs of our community, the education needs, started back when our organization was founded in 2006. We host a lot of very large events for our community. And back in 2007, uh, our events would typically have maybe 25 children attend. Those same events annually each year now are attracting thousands of families, thousands. We can't even fit the number of people that want to participate in our community. Now, we have seen over the years the overcrowding of South Loop Elementary School, and we have consistently seen the families of our community leave our community because there is no viable opportunity for them. They don't want to go to an overcrowded school, and they know they're going to be facing high school. Now, when we started back in 2006, most of the children were, you know, three, four, five, six years old. We have now seen all those children become high school students, and many of the parents cannot afford to go to private schools and or are able to get into many of the selective enrollment schools May I add that Jones is a school that our tax dollars paid for, and many of the students in our area can't even get into that school. Okay. I'm going to have to ask you to please submit whatever else you'd like to We are 100% support of this plan. Thank you so much. 
Catherine? Yes, McKechnie. McKenzie, and I'm going to ask McKechnie. Autumn. McKechnie. Okay, you'll, you'll correct in just a second. And I'm going to ask Autumn Laidler to line up, please. Thank you. Go ahead, ma'am. Uh, K-A-T-H-R-Y-N. M C K E C H N I E. I apologize for mispronouncing it. Carry on. Good evening. My name is Catherine McKechnie. I am a South Loop mom currently serving on the Phillips Academy LSC. Tonight, I want to talk about CPS's investment in Phillips, Tilden, and Dunbar. At its June 20th meeting, CPS provided handouts detailing a combined $55 million investment in these three schools since the year 2000. Since the financial analyst in me loves the challenge, I decided I would dig into whatever numbers I could find on the CPS website. This is what I discovered. Since 2006, CPS has invested $34.7 million in these three schools combined, not the $55 million detailed in the handouts. Of the $34.7 million spent, Phillips received a little over $900,000. That is the neighborhood South Loop School. 722,000 was spent on a district-wide initiative to bring air conditioning to all classrooms. CPS has invested a paltry $188,000 in Phillips, mainly spent on operations and maintenance. Dunbar received a $32 million investment, including nearly $4 million for IT educational programs and other projects. Dunbar, however, is not a neighborhood school. This follows the district's typical pattern of investing heavily in selective enrollment high schools like nearby Jones and other non-neighborhood schools. On the north side, we can find true neighborhood investment, 19 million in Taft and 32 million in Lincoln Park. Converting NTA to a high school will further the trend of disinvesting in neighborhood high schools, especially those in predominantly black and low income areas of Chicago. The South Loop is one of the few racially integrated neighborhoods in Chicago. If CPS chooses to truly invest in Phillips, like it has in Lincoln Park or Taft, we could create a high school with a racially and economically diverse student population. If the board chooses to move forward with its plan to convert NTA, it will signal loud and clear what has been whispered for years. Thank you very much. Please submit anything else by tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Kent, you're up. And Lisa, please. I have a card just with Lisa, so Lisa, get in line if you will. Go ahead, sir. Hello, my name is Dr. Paul Kent, P-A-U-L-K-E-N-T. I'm a pediatrician at Rush University Medical Center. My background is in physics and math at Harvard and then Mayo Clinic, University of Chicago, Lurie Children's Hospital. My wife is also a pediatrician and she is head of one of the two medical directors for the Department of Children and Family Services. I have no dog in this fight. I'm not from Chicago, I'm not from NTA. My children live, and we live in River Forest because we can. We, we're rich enough to move, to make a choice, and get the best schools we possibly can. We're not, we're able to have our own neighborhood school that is outstanding. I wanted to correct a couple misconceptions here. My wife and I, as I, as I said, are both experts in the field of child welfare. Uh, she, in fact, is head of Child Protective Services and probably will be for the state of Illinois shortly. Uh, the first is, that in adverse childhood experiences, the harms that are done to children by psychological, emotional displacement of previous persons that kids can adapt better than adults. That is 100% wrong. The harms that children face, especially psychological harms, increase the risk by threefold. Uh, carrying a weapon, using alcohol, sexual activity, it lowers your IQ by about 10 points. The children behind me are all smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. That's actually not true. But if they lose the type of educational advantage they have, it will be the equivalent of one pack of cigarettes a day. That is the harm that is being chosen to inflict on these children to the benefit of someone else. My child, African American, DCFS, drug exposed, HIV positive at birth, went from one percentile to the 70th, I'm sorry, excuse me, to the 27th percentile in reading because I'm at an outstanding school. If you look at the equity analysis, you'll see black male children, like my son Isaiah, went from 17th percentile to 56th percentile, equivalent to the white children. Sir, I'm going to ask you please submit your... I will submit the rest, but I would like to... Thank you. Thank you so much. I have Thank you for your uh, thoughtful... Um, Attention, I'd like to submit some of the medical research in these areas so you can be familiar with it. Please. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Laidler, and I'm going to ask uh, David, is it Wu, to line up, please? Thank you. Go ahead. A-U-T-U-M-N, 
L-A-I-D-L-E-R. I'm here to speak on behalf of the teachers and staff at National Teachers Academy. I'm here because the consequences to our children are greater than any consequence that any one of us could face by standing up and speaking out. So what is happening inside NTA is most important. NTA is not an asset, it is not a location. It is students, families, and staff. The true asset of NTA is the members of this thriving community. As teachers and staff, we know Black Lives Matter. We teach our children to stand up to injustice, and we listen to families. Through their educational and life experience, our students have faced down adversity and achieved in the classroom and out. Our entire class last year in 2017 was accepted at level one plus and level one schools of their choice. NTA is a promise that was made to our community by the city. CPS is breaking a promise to families and hundreds of students already displaced who have remained committed to NTA and will be displaced again if NTA is broken apart. We have worked to create a purposefully integrated school within our building and community. CPS has said in the proposed plan is to integrate our schools. Intention is not action. This is an issue not just of race, but of race and class. It is systemic. To quote Hanahisi Coates, the point of this language of intention and personal responsibility is broad exoneration. Mistakes were made, bodies were broken, people were enslaved. We meant well, we tried our best. Good intention is the hall pass through history. We refuse to let our children be the victims of good intentions, which result in these harmful outcomes. Our children are not disposable. Their education matters, their bodies matter, their black lives matter. NTA is a level one plus school with 75% African American students. Thank you so much. That are I'm gonna have to, yeah, excuse me, I'm gonna coming. have to ask you please. If this were Submit a level tomorrow. one plus white school, would this proposal be up? Thank you. Um, Lisa, and I'm gonna ask um, Charles Rippenberg, get in line please. Go ahead, please. Uh, Lisa, L-I-S-A, Riffenberg, R-I-F-F-E-N-B-U-R-G. I am an educator at NTA. Uh, I received my bachelor's from Yale University and my master's in elementary education from Northwestern. I've been a teaching artist, an administrator, and an educator in three public school systems. So many of my students, the parents that I work with, uh, have come up here since the beginning in, in, in June. Um, and they have stood up because they have intent, integrity, one of our core values at NTA, that we do the right thing always. Except I have never come up and spoken before, and if I teach them all of the time just by my words, it's not enough. So that's why I'm standing up today to talk with you. I'm teaching them by example. I wish you could see NTA. NTA is the most magical place. I have worked at many CPS schools all over the city, and NTA is hands down the best that I have ever worked at. Any of fellow teachers in the city, they ask you where you work, I say NTA, they go, oh, NTA. Because, as I said, it's, a, it's the best. It's a home, it's a haven, it's a place of brilliant teachers, the hardest working in the city, specifically because of the students that we serve. There's been a lot of discussion about academic rigor that is supposedly not at NTA, and I take personal offense to that. My 12 hour, 13, 14 hour days for the past four years at NTA, my students are experiencing an academically rigorous education where they are learning many grade levels above where they are because of them, because of their parents, and because of me. Students are not just standardized test scores. The students at NTA receive the arts, they receive social emotional education, and they receive needed services. Thank you so much for your comments. Thank you. Mr. Wu, and then um, is it Seibel Hay, please? Let's go ahead, sir. Seibel. My name is David Wu, the uh, last name is W-U. I work for an organization that offers ESL classes to Chinese immigrants in Chinatown. Because these immigrants can't speak English, uh, don't have college education, and have limited job skills, almost all work in Chinese restaurants. These immigrants, uh, Mr. Moy, Mrs. Lee, Mr. Chan, 
leave Chinatown around 10 o'clock in the morning and get home around 10 at night. Some work as far as Gurney, Aurora, uh, in Northwest Indiana. They do this six days a week. Uh, they came to the United States so that their children and not themselves can have a better life. They, ha they hope that through education, the lives of the children can be better. For decades, uh, some Chinatown families, 40, 50 years uh, ago, immigrants in Chinatown uh, have worried about uh, where their children will go uh, for high school. My wife's family immigrated when she was in elementary school after being held back so that uh, she could improve her English. My wife and her older sister uh, went to Lindblom. Her parents never went to, to Lindblom until graduation day, partially because it was far, partially because they worked so many long hours. It was their wish that their children could go to a high school closer, and it is the same wish that immigrant families in Chinatown have today. I support the conversion of the NTA into a high school as it finally provides a nearby high school for Chinatown, especially children of recent immigrants that won't get into selective enrollment schools. But this high school also serves the growing needs of those living in South Loop in North Brownsville. I'd like to submit into record a letter, letters from over 250 adult ESL students who support a high school but can't attend tonight because they're, work, they're working tonight even after the hearing is over to provide for their families. Thank you very much. Mr. Rippenberg, and would Bernie Wong please get in line? Go ahead, sir. Charles Rippenberg, R-I-F-F-E-N-B-U-R-G. Um, for the past four years, I have seen the amazing work that is done at NTA. Um, and I've been coming to many of these meetings. I've followed this entire process, and I've seen this false choice that's put before the neighborhood of you can either have a high school or you can't. It has been shown that the amount of money that CPS has put in all of these proposals that they could build a high school if they wanted to without destroying the amazing community at NTA, but they have chosen not to do that. Uh, I grew up in a small community. I went to small schools, and I can tell you that a small school like NTA serves its students' needs better than a 1,500 to 2,000 student school ever could. Students will get lost in a three building campus, but when you have a campus where such amazing personal attention is given to every child like it is at NTA, you can't replicate that. The community is not just the building, but by destroying NTA, you are destroying that community and all of the good that goes with it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, would Leonard James, is it Breek? Brock. Brock, excuse me, would you be good enough to get in line? Go ahead, please ma'am. Yes, uh, my name is Sibal Wong. I, Can you I spell, your, spell your name, please? Sibal, C-Y-B-A-L-W-O-N-G. And I am the parents of uh, the free CPS alumni. I'm also, is, um, I come from an immigrant uh, parent too. And I have worked with uh, organization and also uh, the churches that uh, serve the uh, immigrant <coughs> immigrant uh, youth and children. And I understand how, uh, how difficult they have to go through to find a high school. And uh, also, I have three letters come from the high school kids that they wrote. Um, because they are all at home studying for the final exam, uh, because they start the final tomorrow for the semester. Yeah, one letter, the student they, uh, that attend Kelly High School. She arrived in this country uh, last year, October 2017. She, she won a high school and elementary school near the, her house because there are many people live in Chinatown and around it. So we have a close high school to Chinatown. It's a good idea for many students it's a short way to go to school. Student B said also he went to a Hing High uh, Elementary School, currently attend Ling Tech High School. It's very far away, so she, she really love to have a high school around Chinatown, so it's more convenient and safe time, and less time for traveling so she can have more time to study. The student 
Ma'am, I'm going to have to thank you for your for your time here tonight. Your time is up. Elizabeth okay. Elizabeth Greer, would you get in the line, please? Go ahead, ma'am. Good evening, Your Honor. My name is Bernie Wong, B-E-R-N-I-E, -E, last name W-O-N-G. I'm a social worker by background, and I, early last year I retired as a founder and CEO of Chinese American Service League. I have held this position for the last 39 years. I'm also a proud parent and grandparent of CPS. In the past months, we have heard many, many testimonies as to the urgent need for a good high school, neighborhood high school. This is substantiated by the Chinatown Vision Plan developed by the Coalition for Better Chinese American Community in collaboration with the Chicago Metropolitan Agency and Alderman Solis. I just want to share with you what I personally have observed in the last 40 years. Over and over again, I watched the pain and worries of our parents. The children had to ch have to change multiple buses, often in the dark, early hours and heavy snow so that they could get to a better education than the one assigned in the neighborhood. Every parent wants the best education for his or her children or child, uh, including all the parents in this room, whether they are opposed or for at high school. I can understand how they feel. This is a challenging situation, but as someone who, has, who is seen as a longtime activist in my community, I can't forget the many pleas of the thousands of parents in our community over the past four decades for a logical high school in our area. After four, so many months for hearing and facts finding, we can come up with a, uh, I hope CPS can come up with a viable plan for our children. After that is, um, create a vibrant ethnically and economically diverse high school. And I also hope that they will um, look for long-term um, uh, solution for the high school besides their uh, creating of the NTA. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, will Elizabeth von Opstow get in line, please? Sir, yes. you're up. Oh. Good evening, everyone. Um, well, I've, my name is Lennon James Rock. I've listened to everything that has been going you will be good enough to spell your last name, please? Bruce. My last name is spelled B-R-O-C-K. Thank you. Carry on. And um, I was listening to everything that was being said, so I was wondering what I could say that could be applicable and germane to what's everything that's going on and something that's comprehensible. Uh, I respect and applaud the advancement and performance of the high schools that, that's going on with the, with the high school students and all of that. And, um, that's very vital. Education is very vital, you know. But I think another thing that should be taken in great consideration, because I'm in support of the NTA organization, and I believe that um, what should be considered is what's going to be bestowed upon the young children and also the parents. Uh, and the displacement that's going to be put on them uh, to have this taking place, you know what I'm saying? We should consider all that. And, you know, from a relig religious perspective, the, the Bible says, um, to whom much is given, much is required. So I think the older kids can probably take on more of responsibility. But to put children under that strain and then their parents when they're working uh, could create you know, uh, extreme hardship. So that should be considered. Thank you very much. And will be it, is it Beatrix uh, Fostro Sandoval? Would you be good enough to get mine? Go ahead, please. Elizabeth Greer, E-L-I-S-A-B-E-T-H-G-R-E-E-R. -E -E I'm the chair of the local school council at NTA, very strongly against this proposal. I'm here to speak on the record about the Near South Steering Committee. I did, initially, I was sent an email by Pedro Soto, Dr. Janice Jackson's chief of staff, requesting the names of three people who I would recommend serve on the committee. Our principal, Mr. Isaac Costlaz, and the executive director of Chicago United for Equity, Nikita Brar, were also asked for three names each. Ultimately, no one from my list or from Nikita's list were chosen, and only one person Mr. Castellaz recommended was on the committee. Additionally, out of the four people chosen by CPS to represent NTA, two of the names on the list were not immediately recognized by Mr. Castellaz or myself. We eventually discovered that they were NTA parents, but neither were actively involved in the fight to save our school. How did their names end up on the list? Both parents told me that they didn't know. Someone from CPS called them and asked them to be on the committee. Neither of these parents attended any of the Near South Steering Committee meetings, effectively whittling down NTA's representation <laughs> to two people. Conversely, South Loop Elementary was represented by four actively engaged members, including two LSC members and one member of their space planning committee. 
NTA was at a distinct disadvantage, and this disadvantage continued as I discovered that in several instances, my email address was left off of CPS's vital communications about the committee, and at a, me a meeting was even convened without my knowledge. I also want to be clear that the agendas of all the meetings focused on what to do when the proposal was enacted. We were not tasked to determine whether or not the proposal should be enacted. On a different note, I want to urge that this plan not be carried through on the basis that CPS is proposing to create a 2,000 seat, three building, one administration, Franken school. There is no academic evidence that larger schools are good for children, and in fact, all evidence points to the contrary. The new South of Elementary School will be the largest within CPS, and as such, it would probably struggle in maintaining uh, academic outcomes for students, and it will drop from its coveted level one plus rating. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, will Kate Gladstein get in line, please? Go ahead, Mary. Elizabeth Van Opstel, V-A-N-O-P-S-T-A-L. Uh, Your Honor, I am an NTA mother and a pediatrician. Where I teach both ethics and evidence-based medicine. Let me state this simply. I think this plan is not evidence-based, and I do not think it is moral. It furthers patterns of racism and class classism that favor some and not others. First, we, pre prevent, we have presented tons of evidence against the plan, the detriments to education for both NTA and South Loop kids when you create a massive elementary. There's evidence behind that. The importance of breaking down data into fair comparisons. And I don't think that CPS is accurately giving you information when we've had independent people look at test score data. There are major discrepancies. And we've talked about the health effects and even mortality effects of adverse childhood events. But more importantly, to the core of my being, I think this plan is immorally wrong. And it breaks do not harm as, as a principle. Many of our kids have been displaced multiple times. First, there were the promises of the ickies being um, told that this would be their school forever, and then that was taken away. Then there were Long Grove <coughs> and Hilliard's kids getting kicked out of South Loop Elementary and their borders being redrawn. And then later, when South Loop was overcrowded, they wanted to have a school within the school at NTA rather than making the boundaries different then. So I ask, how is this equitable? Another thing is the community meetings. They say they have community engagement, but what does that mean? It's not the NTA community. When you go to the community engagement meetings, they don't tell you the history of the racism and the displacement that has affected these kids. And so it's not fair to say that it's that, that they're offering something new when these kids and these other communities have nothing to lose. That's not a fair choice. It's like offering medicine and making people struggle for the choices that are available when the MTA already belongs to a, fam to a family, and it's a cruel plan which does not value equity. Thank you so much. Um, would Candice Sorry. Moore please get in line? I wanted to submit. I also have video testimonials <laughs> to families. Thank you. Uh, yes, Beatrice Frosto Sandoval, B E A T R I Z F R A U S T O hyphen S A N D O V A L. Uh, I'm a parent of a child at NTA, and I uh, am opposed to the plan to convert to a high school, which is in a, in essence a closure plan, um, as other parents and supporters and opponents have stated tonight. Um, and um, I think we've heard uh, many very valuable arguments tonight as far as why this plan is not in the best interest of any of the students involved, whether there are students from NTA or the students from the neighboring com communities where yes, a high school is, a quality high school is needed. Um, I agree that Chinatown, Bridgeport, Armored Square, and Bronzeville need a high school. Uh, everybody needs a good high school, but there is, as other people have said, over a thousand seats in Phillips and very little investment in Phillips to date. Um, because I am also an attorney, I uh, just need to refute some of the things that have been said tonight by uh, the people from the Board of Ed and the Aldermen regarding um, diverse school communities. NTA is a, an extremely diverse school community. Um, Pat Dahl stated that the most academically positive option is uh, this, this um, merger of NTA and South Loop Academy, which we have already stated will result in a three-building campus of over 2,000 seats. And uh, the, the research bears out that larger schools are not, um, are not a positive thing for, for learning. 
the gradual conversion that, uh, that the CPS board proposes as a way to ameliorate the effects of this plan uh, really doesn't eliminate the problem that this is gonna create a mega school, this is going to create displacement of our students, many of which have already been displaced several times as we've stated, and that it is going to destroy the community of NTA. People have said, come up here and said that a school is not the bricks, and that is right, a school is the people. But if you take these people out of the schools, we will not have our principal. Thank we you will so not much, ma'am. I'm gonna have we to ask you, excuse everybody. me, I'm gonna have to ask you to, to submit anything else you'd like to say if you'd like to. Nikita Brower, if you'd get in line, please. Carry on, ma'am. Good evening, Your Honor. Good My name is Kate Gladson, G-L-A-D as a dog, S-O-N. I'm from the Legal Assistance Foundation, and I'm here with Candace Moore from Chicago Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights. We're here on behalf of concerned parents of NTA and Chicago United for Equity to speak against this proposal. We've prepared a written statement, which we will be submitting for your review, and Candace and I will summarize it now. In order for the Board of Education to approve any school action, CPS must prove that its proposal complies with Illinois law and complies with its own guidelines. In this case, CPS's proposal fails to comply with both. Turning first to the law, CPS's proposal violates Illinois law in at least four separate ways. First of all, its proposal includes both a boundary change and a phase out, so the gradual cessation of grades in, L in NTA's elementary school. CPS's proposal includes both of these actions, yet CPS's guidelines fail to include any criteria for a phase out this year. Without criteria for a phase out, the CEO cannot permissibly propose a phase out, and the Board of Education cannot approve a phase out. Second, CPS must provide students with an opportunity to attend a higher performing school after a school action. In this case, NTS will not have that opportunity. NTA and South Loop Elementary are both level one plus schools. Third, the transition plan that CPS has generated fails to commit specific resources to provide NTA students with a comparable level of support services after this action. Specifically, this transition plan fails to address how students will receive additional support for the loss of their health school-based health center and for the community center on site and for their free extracurricular activities. Lastly, CPS failed to include the NTA community in arriving at this decision, which also violates the law. Turning to the guidelines, this request did not come from NTA parents, principal, or community. Therefore, it fails to meet the guidelines. Additionally, there Thank has not- Thank you very much. Uh, Jessica Schneider, if you get in line, please. Ms. Moore, carry on, please. Good, good evening, Your Honor. Evening. My name is Candace Moore, C-A-N-D-A-C-E, Moore, M-O-O-R-E, and I'm from the Chicago Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights. Following Kate's comments, I want to make a few additional points. Uh, the first point is that it's important that the full scope of community feedback and comments be considered. Many students, parents, and community members made time to come out and speak out, hoping that this time, unlike so many others, would be a real moment when the powers that be at, CFP, at CPS would actually listen to them. This is why we are formally requesting that Your Honor rely strictly on the transcripts of the community meetings and not the summaries of the meetings. In reviewing the summaries, we found a number of inconsistencies that we have documented in our request, and I'll submit that, uh, that make them wholly unreliable. Additionally, as we consider the best interests of the communities at issue, I want to make a couple points. One, NTA is a resource. Beyond its academic excellence, it offers a number of different community benefits. Uh, it has a UIC health clinic that provides health care services to students and community members, including uninsured and underinsured families. It has a wonderful partnership with the Chicago Park District, which offers recreational programs, including swimming, affordable childcare. Um, additionally, the Chicago Housing Authority in their plan for transformation specifically acknowledges NTA as a resource and investment to support the Hilliard Homes and the Ickes redevelopment. The final point I wanna make is that closing this school does, does more than just take a good thing away. It actually creates additional harms. It once again displaces communities who already were asked to bear this burden when they were cut out of the South Loop's boundaries years ago and those who were displaced in the historic 50 school closing. It imposes a burden on this community while many of the supporters that were listed tonight benefit while losing very little or nothing at all. It destroys the school community of educators, parents, community members who came together and worked hard to turn things around for their students and achieve the success we now see at NTA. It is for these reasons and the others outlined in our statement that we'll be submitting that th that is Thank our- Thank you so much. We'll get your material. Thank you. Yes. Will uh, Iko Hibino get in line, please? 
Ms. Breyer. My first name is spelled N I K E T A. Please uh, stop the time. Thank you. Excuse me. Excuse me. What? Continue with the time, please. I'm sorry. I was Continue following the, the protocol by uh, which you were holding the time for everyone else's name. N I K E T A. Brar is B R A R. I'm the executive director of Chicago United for Equity, which is a Chicago-based uh, organization focused on promoting more just, equitable, and inclusive city, built bridging, building bridges across race, class, and geography. Our organization became involved in this proposal in response to community sentiment that this was not in line with community requests or interests, which was demonstrated after 1,500 signatures were supported, was, were submitted in opposition of this plan, and over 470 letters were submitted to state legislators requesting an assessment of this proposal through a racial equity assessment tool. Our organization has spent the last three months conducting a racial equity assessment, engaging over 300 members of the Chinatown, South Loop, and Near South community. Um, this is more than any of the other community organizations, and it is also a more diverse offering than any of the organizations that you've heard speak from uh, today. Overwhelmingly, people supported the goals of diversity and high quality school options, and overwhelmingly, the community decided that this was a proposal that would meet the Chinatown community's needs to a certain respect, and that community has been underserved for nearly 40 years. However, the community respondents also found that this disproportionately burdens three specific groups, all of which are low-income and African-American students, and that in response, there were seven, uh, I'm sorry, six different proposals that were uh, developed that would meet the same needs for diversity, that would meet the same needs for high quality high school options, but would not disproportionately impact African American students, would not create disruptions that are unnecessary, and would not systematically create a segregation uh, border for Phillips High School, which currently has the ability to enroll a diverse offering of students and would not be able to if it was limited to the- Thank you for your comments. Uh, would Kiku Habino get in the line, please? Good evening, my name is Jessica Schneider. I'm with the Chicago Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights, and alongside my colleagues who spoke before me, I'm here to express opposition to this proposal. I want to focus on and build on one aspect of this inequitable proposal that has already been mentioned. We have heard throughout this process that there needs to be a separate neighborhood high school and that Phillips High School is not a viable option. It is supposedly too far, it is not a quality option, and it won't work. However, at the same moment, CPS is considering a proposed school action that will send students in Englewood to Phillips High School yeah. when their school is closed. It is, in fact, farther for students in Englewood to travel to Phillips than it would be for South Loop students, so why is it not too far for them? South Loop is 3.4 miles from Phillips High School. Uh, Hope High School in Englewood is 3.3 miles away, and Robeson High School in Englewood is 4.7 miles away. Students from South Loop at farthest would have to travel 27 minutes by public transportation, yet the students from Hope and Robinson would have to travel 35 minutes by bus and train, or from Hope and 37 minutes by train from Robeson. So I ask, when this is clearly an inequitable result, why is CPS operating in this way with this proposal? I submit it is because CPS has always operated in a way where what's good enough option for one community of students is not good enough for another. Simply put, CPS is willing to reroute low-income black students, but not others. Children know when you don't think their community is worth the investment. This proposal will affect not just current students, but generations of students. In a district that overwhelmingly underserves low-income black students, why close this overperforming level one plus school? These children are exceeding all their standards and expectations, and they should be able to continue to do so. Thank you very much. Uh, will Uda Habino please get in line? Heiko Habino, please. Please step aside. Please, ma'am. Good evening. Aiko Kojima Habino, A I K O K O J I M A H I D I N O. I have an uh, undergrad degree in uh, policy management and a uh, master degree in media and government studies. Um, I am a uh, PhD candidate at ADD at the University of Chicago in sociology. Chicago 
currently teaching sociology at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, uh, specifically a class on the focus on inequality uh, in the foodscape in the world, in, in, in the US, and especially the city of Chicago. So this, uh, I'm against this CPS proposal because this is following the uh, concerning pattern of CPS, um, the current um, operation, which is racial inequity in Chicago is increasing as a result of current school construction and closures. The CPS school infra infrastructure spending is more inequitable than the re retired Illinois education funding formula. Before funding re reform, CPS received 76 cents for every dollar that majority white districts receive and asked for reform. Yet Chicago gave its own majority black school just 38 cents, I repeat, just 38 cents for every dollar spent on building and ma uh, maintaining majority white schools in Chicago from 2011 to 2015. Moreover, majority white school receives funds to drive community development. Majority black schools, on the other hand, get funding to touch problems. The most common type of spending on majority black schools was for interior renovations such as paint upgrades security cameras and uh, metal detectors. The most common type of spending at the majority white schools was new construction, 56% of these schools. Not a single segregated black school ever received new construction funds from uh, fiscal year 2011 to 2015. So this is a concerning pattern, and this proposal is one of the typical uh, case of this. I, I'm against this proposal. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, Pauline Lapinser, if you get in line, please. Kiku Dino. Good evening, Your Honor. My mm -hmm. name is Kiku Dino. K I K U H I D I N O. And my child is a student at NPA, a level one class, Title One school, where he is excelling due to the <coughs> wonderfully dedicated work of the administ administrators, teachers, and parents. NTA was not consulted as required by policy manual section 703.2, section three, because we would have expressed our opposition to this change. Our concern is regarding the negative impact to our school's performance community and enrollment numbers. I request that you meet with NTA parents to clarify this boundary change and to discuss the future plan to maintain this strong academic community and the high performance school. We do not feel that our interests are being well served with this uh, move and that this has not been conducted in the spirit of the MCLB Title I, um, Parental Involvement Policy, a Section 801.3. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Latasha Watkins, if you'd get in line, please. This is the student. This is the student. Thank you. Okay. Student C. Uh, I am a third grader at NTA. I am against the proposal because I think it is wrong. It's not fair to NTA. It's another school CPS is destroying. NTA is a level one plus, and we have a gym, a pool, a park, a field, almost there, everything. All of that will be great for a high school, but there are still kids who have not even finished kindergarten. If you distract the young kids' education, <coughs> you'll put the next generation of kids in trouble. NTA is the best school for everyone, black or white or Asian like me. Please do not close NTA. Thank you very much. Um, would Chris Hall get in line, please? Carry on, please. Um, Pauline Lipman, L-I-P-M-A-N. I'm a professor of education policy at UIC. I'm a researcher and I work with data, but I'm not going to discuss CPS data. I've been testifying at school closing hearings since 2004. Every year, parents, teachers, students, and researchers like me come with testimonies and data for why schools should not be closed. But the mayor and his appointed board are not weighing data. No disrespect to you, sir. There is no way to understand the board's proposal to close NTA and shuffle students to South Loop outside the larger context of race, real estate, and privatization. 
so-called disparities between South Loop and NTA are negligible. That's smoke and mirrors. Here are some data we should pay attention to. Since 2001, CPS has closed, phased out, consolidated, or turned around 160 schools, almost all in black and brown communities. 87% of all students affected have been African American. Meanwhile, CPS authorized 130 charter schools and spent money for that. Students shuffled from school to school, away from families and trusted adults out of their neighborhood. Students from Christ were shuffled to MTA. Now NTA students are going to be shuffled again. The NTA closing is tied to closing the only neighborhood high schools in Englewood. While CPS invests in schools in affluent and white north side, they disinvest in neighborhood black high schools. This is part of an assault on low-income black Chicagoans that has driven 240,000 African Americans out of Chicago since 2000 and cut the black teaching force almost in half. Our data show that school closings have not improved education and have been destabilizing for children and families and communities. Thank Investing you. in Southside High Jim, School have doesn't to have to be contingent on pushing out NTA. We'll stop the testimony there. Thank you very much. Okay, well, Yeoman McGrow, please. Um, if I mispronounce your name, are you from the GAP committee? Did, did I pronounce? I'm sorry. It says the gap. Looks like to me. I'm sorry. Is it Leoman McGraw? Okay. So you get in line after this. Ge the, the gentleman's about. I'm sorry. Carry on, please, ma'am. Hi, I'm Latasha Watkins. L A T A S H A W A T K I N S. Is this really about a boundary change? If it, if so, then a separate hearing really should be uh, held regarding the high school portion of this. It's not the building that makes the school, it's the people, is what I heard. As long as the people are white enough, why don't current families within NTA boundaries send their children to NTA now, is a question. I feel like the uh, problem of overcrowding at South Loop is a created problem when 40% of the children are from outside of South Loop's neighborhood boundary. The school is not overcrowded if it only admits the students within its boundary. I asked Alderman Dow specifically about whether we would do an attendance assessment, and I think respectfully she said, no, we're not going to do that. Why? Why is that not being done to understand whether we really do need to build, number one, a new school, and then two, whether it's needed to, uh, whether we need to sacrifice NTA for a high school. <laughs> we already talked about what community members uh, generated this proposal, which were not those from NTA who have not been involved in creating a proposal. And why have not other alternatives been seriously considered? For instance, uh, why are Chinatown or South Loop or Bridgeport not offering one of their buildings for this conversion? What about investing in Dunbar and Phillips to better impact more CPS students, specifically those that are black and brown? What about building a new high school building structure instead of a new elementary school for South Loop? We are not against, as a uh, NTA community, we're not against communities having a high school that they well deserve. We're not against diversity. In fact, diversity is occurring naturally at NTA already. What we are against is sacrificing our students who, why should they bear the burden of this change? Why should they be dis displaced and do so at their academic risk? Personally, I am a CPS student and it looks like I'm out of time. You are, thank you. Who do you have with you? This is Nelson. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You, you all know the applause will not be on the record. I did hear you, but it's not on the record. That was, that was for now. So, uh, Janetta Dimitri, would you get in line, please? Carry on, sir, if you will, please. Chris Hall, C H R I S H A L L. Uh, Opposed to plan. This deal has been described as not perfect, but good. However, in reality, a good deal is one where sacrifice and hardship are shared. When you list out the sacrifices in this deal, NTA students are the ones who lose their school building. NTA students are the ones who lose their teacher. NTA students are the ones who lose the administration that has lifted their school to its current one plus height. NTA students are the only ones who lose. However, this has all been known since the plan was devised. 
And the reality is that the current proposal offers political benefits that outweigh the cost to the community, and especially those borne solely by the students and families at NTA. The question then is, is there a solution within the current proposal that could make it at least a good one? I believe there is. If the building at Cermak and State is the only viable high school option for the communities involved, then the new building at 16th and Clark should become the new NTA. Now this solution is still far from perfect. Ask anyone from the NTA community if they want to be forced from their school. Furthermore, it still inherits the issues with the current plan, most notably that both schools will suffer from overcrowding in the very near future. However, this common sense change to the proposal is also fair and has precedence. Dr. Janice Jackson has said the proposal was, right, was to right the wrong uh, committed by CPS just 10 years ago. Alden and Dow said this as well. This statement is disingenuous at best. But if there is any honesty to it, this change would be a huge leap closer to that goal. Furthermore, this solution, unlike the first ever closing of a level one plus school, is not without precedent. It is the exact same solution that CPS implemented at Southgate Elementary, the first time the same vulnerable families were displaced from their school. At the last meeting, the representative from PDA noted that the schools are the community's assets and the community decide how they are best utilized. I agree with that sentiment. Let the community decide. Is my proposal perfect? No, but neither is the current one. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to ask Kayla Perkins, please, to get in line. Carry on, sir. Uh, my name is Leonard E. McGee. L-E-O-N-A-R-D, middle initial is E, last name is ABC space G E. I'm the president of the GAP Community Organization. Uh, first of all, I'd like you to consider uh, the boundaries to be that of the tipped boundaries. The tipped, which was back in 1998 uh, under Madeline Haycock, is the one that actually paid the $38 million to build the school, which is built by black money, not South Loop. The TIF belong, the school belongs to the TIF, and we are in support of bringing the high school up. And the key word here is quality, a quality high school. They've talked about a lot of high schools in the area, but the issue is quality, and we would like to make sure that the TIF boundary, the people who pay for it, and those are black people who pay for it, tax increment financing, over the last 20 years have actually put up $38 million, most of the people in here didn't put a dime into the school. So we would like to have our building back. We're already at the table. We want the boundaries to reflect what the tip is. And anybody else who wants to sit at the table, we welcome them. But the African-American community that built it and paid for it should have access to the high school. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And would, uh, is it uh, Milda Sancha? Uh, yes, would you get in line? Thank you so much. Thanks for the help. Hello. Hello. Um, I'm Janela, J-O-H-E-N-E-T-T-A, Deming, D-I-M-I-N-G. I'm here, a parent and a resident of the Meeks uh, Low Income Community in Bronxville. And I'm here because all the stuff that we talked about came none of the stuff they said to, to help the people that's trying to make this decision. The only thing I'm asking is that whatever decisions y'all make, could y'all just um, include, think about us, think about us, because our kids, you know, they need a chance. To. We try to do what we can to make sure our kids have a, you know, equal rights to everybody else. But we trying to do the right thing by our kids. We asking y'all the same things to do right, you know, do right by our kids. Our kids deserve it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, <laughs> Miles uh, Sanders. If you get in the line, please. Hi. Can you carry on, carry on? Hi, I am 12 years old in the seventh grade, and I am a proud NTA scholar and a proud. I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt you. You can start her time again, but this is about the student C. D. 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 I I am 12 years old in the seventh grade, and I am a proud NTA scholar and a proud member of NTA Student Congress, where we are taught to be leaders and advocates for our school. I have been attending NTA since I was in kindergarten. In my eight years at NTA, being on an only child, I have met so many amazing teachers, staff, and most of all, I've built friendships with my peers. I've gone from a kid who was shy and to myself to a teen who has been taught by my teachers to believe in myself, to believe in myself. NTA is not just a elementary school to me. It's my second home. More than anything, NTA, NTA is where I began learning life skills to prepare me for my future. I feel this proposal is racist and unjust towards African-American students and should not be continued. 
TPS does not listen to how the students, families, and staff feel. They only care about making change for South Loop and other communities and breaking apart our NTA family. I have said this before and I will say it again. CPS needs to be building up schools, not tearing them down. Black students' lives and their education matter, but they obviously can't see that. Our principal, Mr. Castellas, is an amazing principal who believes in all of his students. NTA needs to remain a level one plus elementary school and nothing less. NTA is here to stay. Thank you very much. Um, Isaac Castellas, if you get in line, please. Carry on, please. Hi, I'm Melda Saunders, M-I-L-D-A-S-A-U-N-D-E-R-S. -E I'm an NTA parent of two children, a physician, and a lifelong Chicagoan. NTA is a level one, predominantly African-American, predominantly low-income school. We should be studied and emulated, not closed or boundary changed out of existence. We support diverse schools, both racially and socioeconomically. We welcome families to join us. But to close a high-functioning school because it sits on prime real estate, that's not integration, that's colonization. As a lifelong Southsider, I agree that the near South Side should have a high school option, but this is not the way. Has CPS ever closed a level one school? I sympathize with parents in Chinatown, Bridgepoint, near South, and even the South Loop. Your struggles are important, but our children matter too. NTA has school supports, medical clinics, and more importantly, staff and faculty who have always wanted them there and have always supported them. We are better than this Chicago. We are better than this CPS. This doesn't, this is a false choice. This proposal does not make sense. We shouldn't close level one plus schools. We shouldn't build a high school that will rapidly be too small for all of the communities that it proposes it will serve. And we don't let one community take a school from another community just because they want it. Let's come up with an equitable and rational plan. Let's consider Dunbar, King, Phillips, or other schools other than this plan. We're better than this. Thank you. Um, Patricia Crosby, if you get in line, please. This is going to be, I take it, student E. I am a third grade student at NTA. I have been there since I was in kindergarten. I have so many friends at NTA, I can't even count them. Many of them are not even in my grade. It's like a second family to me. NTA has the most amazing teachers. They make learning exciting and fun. They are always there to help. We have a program called Second Step, which help us, helps us learn with kids in other classes and get to know them. This has helped to make new friends outside of my regular homeroom. We can compare how I like one thing and they might like another thing. They encourage you to be partners with across classrooms. We have an awesome pool with great swim classes, and I know I'm a much better swimmer than I used to be. I think the plan to convert NK to a high school is wrong. It will hurt many families, including mine. My sis I have two younger siblings. My sister is here at NTA in kindergarten, and my brother is two years old. Like many families, we'd be split apart. I would stay at NTA. My sister has to go to South Loop, and my brother can't go to either one. <coughs> because the plan requires a lot of a construction, I'm afraid I would lose a lot of my friends because who wants to learn in a construction zone? It can't be good for any student's education to deal with that in class. I'd lose, the, I'd lose the pool as well. My sister definitely loses the, the pool because South Loop does not have one, and also the health center. I take public transit with my dad and get to school, my dad and sister to get to school. We're not sure how that will work, but my building is 10 blocks away from hers. I'm afraid CPS would be tearing their apart the NTA community that I love. This plan will hurt many families, including and strong and great community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Daryl Acnampona, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sure I didn't do justice to your name. Sir, carry on, please. Isaac Castellas, I-S-A-A-C-C-A-S-T-E-L-A-Z. -E I'm the principal at National Teachers Academy. Back in 1966, nearly to this day, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. moved into a West Side apartment to join a movement designed to desegregate Chicago. During this time in our city, Dr. King came to see that more than passing new laws, the crisis Chicagoans faced could only be solved once we learned to, quote, desegregate our minds, end quote. 
In so doing, he called for, quote, a coalition of conscience, unquote, brave people of every race and background working together to serve the cause of equity. He said, quote, our power is in our unity, the force of our souls, and the determination of our bodies, end quote. This proposal reminds us of the conditions King spoke of so long ago. We are told this plan could right a historical wrong in which the boundary of South Loop School was moved to exclude poor black children who were sent to NTA, a new unproven school at that time. However, this proposal won't right that wrong because NTA has righted that wrong all by itself. Whereas the boundary shift years ago denied poor black children a quality education at South Loop Elementary School, those same students today have a quality, high quality option at NTA, which has risen from a level three to a level one plus school in four years. NTA is a product not only of the kind of coalition Dr. King sunk, but also the power of the kind of unity he envisioned so many years ago. The process of considering this proposal has shown us just how powerful the NTA community is. But I also think that hidden beneath it all is an opportunity, an opportunity to do something truly remarkable. Let's do as Dr. King urged and form a coalition of conscience between our communities. I call for us all, NTA, South Loop, Chinatown, CPS, and yes, City Hall, to reconsider this proposal together Sir, and your time is alternatives up. Thank you which very work much. for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Joanne Boston, please. Would you get in line? Carry on, please, ma'am. Hi, my name is Patricia Crosby, P-A-C-R-I-C-I-A, last name Crosby, C-R-O-S-B-Y. Um, I'm a proud NTA biological foster and adoptive parent of six young, brilliant young men, um, and I have two left in, at NTA. Um, we're a level one plus elementary school. Our children, the teachers, staff, and parents worked extremely hard to get to the level status. Now usually when you achieve this major accomplishment, you're rewarded, but instead it feels as if we're being punished. Um, when I think about NTA, I think about um, it takes a village to raise a child, and that's what NTA has been doing. Um, one of my children who's in seventh grade now he was my foster son now, he's my adopted son. Um, he went to two schools prior to this and he was labeled as um, learners, learning um, disabled. But um, being at NTA, he thrived. Now I already knew he was a genius, um, <laughs> but being at NTA, he, he thrived right now. He's um, his grades, he's in seventh grade, his grades are A's and B's, and they're trying to get him into the select enrollment school. Um, it, it's unfortunate. Um, I mean, I agree. I respect everyone's opinion, but what people have to understand is that we have to think about the children. NTA children, they, they need that elementary school. Please try not to turn NTA into a high school. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Chantel Boston, if you'll get in line, please. Sir, are you a student? Yes. Okay, we're going to show you a student F. Go ahead, please. <coughs> Good afternoon. It makes no sense to put NTA in a different, to, to put NTA students in a different environment. This will affect students mentally and, ac and academically. This will make NTA students feel as though they are inferior since they are not being considered at all. This will make it less convenient for NTA families. Should you, should you really take away someone, someone's home because the, their scores are slightly, lower, are slightly lower than people from families that have more money and resources? Grammar schools, grammar schools where a student develops the most. So would you want to put fourth graders in the same environment as high schoolers? Even eighth graders have trouble transitioning to high school. Yet you give fourth graders the burden, the burden of having to live with this four years early. Think, think back to your fourth grade year when you probably barely managed to make friends, and all of a sudden having to be put into having to be put near high schoolers who have completely different ways than you do. What would become of your teachers and our students' future? 
It is true that people must travel out of their way to go to high school, but now we have to go out of our way to go to school. Students in the South Loop will have an opportunity to be successful, but another community won't. So you are prioritizing <coughs> other com another community over us. How would you feel if you had a current home ripped away from you and you were told to go somewhere else? A home that you have had for, the, for most of your life, taken away by people who don't even know you just because they can. Just because your peers scored slightly lower, so the outcome of your life just got completely changed because of someone else's test score, not yours, and nothing that you say or do can change that. We are not numbers or letters that can be measured and placed in boxes. We are people. Thanks to our great teacher, uh, thanks to our great teachers, our scores are rapidly growing, and at this rate, we will soon surpass the South Loop. Your Honor, I'm, I'm almost done, so can I just please have a seat? Sir, I have, to, I have to move you along. I still have half more to go from you. Thank you so much. This is student. Are you a student, sir? Yes. Thank you. Carry on, please. I'm a sixth grader currently attending the, attending the school NTA. Our school shouldn't be shut down just because people want it for their kids. But my classmates and my peers and I, we deserve a quality education also. And I'm kind of a problem child at school and the staff at my school do all that they can to make it better for me and the rest of my kid and the rest of the kids at NTA. Over the past four years that I've been attending NTA, I've been, you know, people been helping me and giving me chance after chance, which shows that they do care, because if they didn't, I would probably be expelled. So if, so I appreciate the staff, Ms. Brown, Ms. Brooks, Mr. Castellas, and a former staff member, Mr. Valencia, and other staff members. NTA is our second home. We all live here, so don't destroy it. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you very much. Will Olivia Shelton please get in line and Sarah Bush, will you get in line as well? Are you a student? No. Okay. Well, I hope I played a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, my name is Chantel Boston, S-H-A-N-T-E-L-B-O-S-T-O-N. Hello, I am a parent of three children who currently attend NTA. The current proposal that presents the idea to close NTA and scatter our children into three separate buildings is a huge inconvenience to my family and I. Even though I became a mother at a very young age, I have always aimed to give my children a sense of stability wherever I chose to reside. I have always aimed to do whatever was necessary to assure just that. Even in the time where we lived in a group home, clear across town, I traveled miles to get them to a quality school on time every day and walk them to school every day to ensure their safety when we were living in a gang infested neighborhood. Now we live in a much better neighborhood where my children are able to walk by themselves to school and now with them being separated to different buildings, my children will have to travel to and from school without the protection of each other, especially my five-year-old son who will have to travel alone to school. There is room for over 4,000 students at Wendell Phillips High School and also Dunbar High School for residents of the communities the said proposal is supposed to accommodate the high school students to attend currently, and I don't understand why small children will be forced to make a further commute for school and the high school students who are at an appropriate age to commute back and forth to school using public transportation. The fact that these children and their families have made the decision not to attend their neighborhood high school is a choice they have made. But the schools are there and available to all of these communities that are requesting for another school at the cost of our school, NCA, and it is totally unacceptable. My point in case and all that I have said is that all of our young school age generations deserve a quality education, but most, but must it be at, at a cost of the inconvenience to some, but a convenience to others. I am and will always be opposed to the current proposal of closing NTA. Thank you. Thank you very much. Will Joy Clendenning get in the line, please? Carry on, ma'am. Your Honor, my name is Olivia, O-L-I-V-I-A, Shelton. S-H-E-L-T-O-N. I'm here to oppose closing NTA. I am a grandmother. 
My grandson, Emil, he's in third grade. Emil used to be an introvert. Uh, since we came to NTA, Emil has really grown. He had been on the honor roll at least for two years. I'm older. I am committed because Emil is committed to going to school, being at school on time. Emil is committed to being in his class. Emil is committed to not wanting to miss anything. Now, why, why, why does he feel like that? Because he loves the school. I love the school by observing and participating. And most importantly, uh, NTA is a community. Emil is taught, I love the way they position their classes. Uh, it's like a community, it's in a round table. He's learning not just uh, academics, he's learning life lessons, how to be in the community and how to be an individual. I really love that. Also, my grandson has asthma and the clinic it's a lifesaver. He has had several episodes, and the clinic was able to take care of it just like that. I didn't have to go anywhere. They knew what to do. They have his records on file, and they knew what to do. And uh, secondly, I just think that CPS and everybody else needs to know it's never a wrong time to do the right thing. Please do the right thing when you come to NTA, because it's just not fair. It's just not fair. And everybody that stands on the sidelines and don't speak up, you're guilty. You should always say something when you have an opportunity. Thank you, Yarn. Thank you very much. Well, uh, I think it's Priya Shaw. If you'd get in line, please. Carry on, ma'am, please. Good evening. My name is Sarah Bush. I'm a parent, a Sarah Bush, S-A-R-A-H, B-U-S-H, parent of two daughters at NTA. I want to talk about the process here. First of all, despite a number of what can only be described as pro forma community meetings, there's been very little community input, especially from NTA. As Ms. Feldstein pointed out, this was a plan that was hatched long ago, long before anyone at NTA was consulted. Meanwhile, at the community meetings, we've heard speaker after speaker raising concerns about the destruction of our wonderful community. Yet the plan before you scatters our students across four different campuses, splitting up family and destroying that community. Speakers have pointed out that the proposed high school does not really meet the needs of the full near south community, Chinatown, Bronzeville, Bridgeport. Many are left out. It's simply too small. We've heard about how fast this community is growing. It's going to be overcrowded almost immediately. Students are being forced into a school built for a grammar school. We've asked the board to consider other options to meet that need in the near south community. Just this past week, we requested that the Office of Family and Community Engagement facilitate a meeting between NTA parents and those in the South Loop, and we were refused that meeting. That should have been the first step in any community-driven process, considering many alternatives. I want to turn then to the personal side. Like many NTA families, my family has already felt the impact of a school closing. My daughter will be one of those fourth graders sent to school with high school students simply not acceptable. This instability created by this plan is bad for children, bad for families, and bad for the city. What kind of a school district closes a high-functioning, well-loved school community? This process has been deeply flawed from the very beginning, and this plan is a terrible one. I stand before you in strong opposition to the plan to close NTA. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Will Kevin Stencil, is it Stencil? Yes, if you get in line, please. Carry on, ma'am. Thank you. My name is Joy Clendenning, J-O-Y-C-L-E-N-D-E-N-N-I-N-G, -E -N -N and I'm honored and humbled to stand here with the amazing people in this room and the amazing people in the overflow room. I'm a CPS parent. It's my 16th year. I'm a former public high school teacher. Um, I have a BA from Harvard in history and a master's in education policy from UIC. I'm the managing director for Raise Your Hand for Illinois Public Education, a parent advocacy group which advocates for equitable and adequate public education funding and education policies which provide quality education to all children. Over the past eight years, we have worked with parents, students, and schools about facilities and programs at their schools throughout CPS in Illinois. We've read and analyzed the various criteria year after year, the various formulae applied, um, and the legal code. Our conclusion, 
Without a robust, authentic community engagement process that creates a real comprehensive citywide facilities plan, CPS should put a hold on closing and opening schools. Speaking specifically to the case of NTA, Your Honor, this proposal should not move forward because this is not a community developed and community supported proposal. Therefore, it does not meet that criteria. And the proposal is not in the best interest of the students. NTA students are at a wonderful school which meets their needs and they are doing well. Moving them is not in their best interest. You have the chance, Your Honor, to make the right and just recommendation. Tell CPS that this school action should not move forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, will Aria Lundvik please um, get in line? Carry on, ma'am. Yes. My name is Priya Shah, P-R-I-Y-A-S-H-A-H. -H. Um, Your Honor, I stand before you today as both a veteran CPS teacher and parent to a second grader at NTA. <coughs> NTA's boundaries should not be decimated, nor should it be closed and converted to a high school. As an educator, I'm deeply offended that this proposal even exists. The proposal is rooted in racism and blatantly ignores the tremendous achievement that NTA has shown during its tenure as a Chicago public school. Working in a high achieving selective enrollment school on the north side, I'm painfully aware that these types of proposals <coughs> never attempt to destroy school communities in more affluent areas. As a parent, the options that have been presented for my son and his peers are unacceptable. I reject option one, to send him to a school that spans three buildings and has 1,800 plus students. There is no data that supports success in schools that are so immensely large, especially for low-income minority students. I also reject option two, keeping him at NTA. The prospect of keeping him at a school that is slowly being destroyed and reduced year by year, while half of his schoolmates are transferred to another school, is equally unacceptable. As the youngest grade in the building, he would be a fourth grader. My son would no longer have opportunities to shine as a mentor to younger students as our phenomenal NTA middle schoolers who are behind me do on a daily basis. Your Honor, my message to you is this. Encourage the Chicago Board of Education to vote against this proposal. Show integrity by asking them um, to visit NTA to see firsthand the magic that occurs there on a daily basis. Have the courage to view the proposal objectively without the influence of politics and those of those with wealth and power. Finally, do what is right for my child and NTA's children. Thank you. Thank you very much. Rochelle McGee, if you'd get in line, please. Um, I'd like the record to show that we are beyond the time of 8.30 when the, um, this uh, meeting, this hearing was to have terminated. However, we have a number of speakers to go. I'm going to continue until all the cards that I have, everybody's had their opportunity to have their two minutes, but I'm going to ask everybody, please, Keep to the two minutes so that we can get everybody uh, through the system tonight. Thank you so much. Sir, carry on. Thank you. Kevin Stanciel, S-T-A-N-C-I-E-L. I'm a resident of The Gap, which is between 31st, 35th, Michigan, and King Drive for over 25 years. Personally, my 18-year run at CPS ends this spring when my daughter graduates from high school. My youngest daughter graduates from high school. At no time did either of my daughters have a good high school option. I'm here, not for myself, I'm here for all of my neighbors so that they don't have to travel very far or pay for private high schools as they do right now. In The Gap, we have eight high schools within a six blocks of our neighborhood. Five citywide charters, two military academies, two alternative schools, an all girls school, an all boys school. All of those schools but one are level two or two plus. In your press release for this, Pastor Earl Granberry is quoted as saying, all of our kids deserve access to a high quality high school in their community. If this plan is approved, students from the North Bronzeville area will no longer have to travel far outside their community to reach their dream school. Well, in my neighborhood, they won't. We're in the preference enrollment boundary. If you choose to go forward with this plan, I ask that you include the Pershing boundaries within this plan. 
because the thing is, is that, and let me say that, as a proud Pershing graduate also, um, as according to your numbers, the GAP and Lake Meadows have a total of 87 students. So you're telling me that you can't find, using about 31% of the students would attend, you cannot find about 45 seats for the students in our communities. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rochelle McGee, would you get in line, please? And also, will C.W. Chan get in line? Ma'am, yeah, continue. My name is Anna Lundvik, L-U-N-G-V-I-C-K. To Chicago, when Dr. King delivered his I Have a Dream speech, he challenged a promise made in the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal with certain unalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Dr. King said it is obvious that America has defaulted on this promissory note. Instead of honoring the sacred obligation, America has given the Negro people a bad check, a check that has come back marked insufficient funds. To Chicago's, the plan to close NTA centers around one school, Phillips, a level two high school whose students are majority black and economically disadvantaged. A powerful South Hill community leader shared with the media that Phillips is not an option and that it's no wonder South Loop parents scramble to find a better high school for their children. CPS supports the belief that Phillips is not quality in a letter to South Loop families stating that converting MTA to a high school provides, quite, quote, a continuum of high quality school options. And at the same time, CPS is declaring that Phillips is quality for displaced black students from Inglewood. In a letter to Inglewood families, CPS states that Phillips provides Inglewood students with a, quote, higher performing high school that is good match for their needs. Their needs, whose needs? Black students' needs? Definitely not white student needs. To Chicago, CPS promises a commitment to every child from every community. They do, but do they really? Where else but in Chicago would a school board close a top rated school transforming the lives of black students? Where else but in the city, CNN reported as the most segregated in the nation would a school board close a school where black students grow more than 75% of nationwide of students nationwide. This is another bad check, another promissory note coming back marked insufficient funds. Two Chicago's eliminating MTA in order to provide a high quality school option. Thank you very much. Your time is up. Next, excuse me. Ma'am, your time is up. <coughs> Carry on, please, and we'll Heidi Chan, get in line, please. My name is Rochelle McGee, R-O-C-H-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, last name M-C, capital G-E-E. -E. What I would like to do is to yield my position here to the gentleman next to me. Who is the gentleman next to you? Leonard McGee. Sir, did you already testify here earlier? Yes, sir. Okay, in fairness to the other people who want to be heard, I think that I'm going to hold you until the end. We'll have the time at the end, and we'll hold you then. Thank, Thank you. you. I won't deny it, but I want to in fairness to everybody else. Thank you. Okay. Will um, Caitlin Hines, I hope I got that right. Get in line, please. Mr. Chan, if you will. Hi, I'm C.W. Chan, I'm chairperson for the Coalition for Better Chinese American Committee, also chairperson for the Chinatown Vision Plan Steering Committee that charts the uh, development of the community. So how long we've we been talking about this issue of the high school issue? A few months ago when the community came to the public hearings, many of the parents on their own initiative put up this t-shirt that we've been waiting for 40 years. But 40 years only indicate these people, the parents that experience 40 years means a lifetime for them. I've talked to people over 80 years old, and 60 some years ago, they were already talking about the experience of taking two hours to go to high school growing up in Chinatown. So when we celebrate the Chinatown, excuse me, sir. The clock. On the clock, please. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> trust, trust me, sir, I know how much time you guys have. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, recently, Chinatown was uh, having a discussion uh, a few years ago commemorating the community centennial which means we have been at the same location for over 100 years. Very few people realize that. Okay, uh, you look at the city of Chicago. As an ethnic community, I think we've been at the same location longer than anybody else. So we have experienced, we have seen uh, the history of neglect and, uh, and uh, inequities. And 
for the whole hundred years, we never had a high school. So when we engage in this vision plan, we interview about 2,000 people in the community, and the high school issue came out to be one of the top concerns for the whole community. That's for us to come to the hearing for the last few months. We have been to every single public hearing and board meeting for the last few months just to state our case. Uh, we started with a several approach. We came up with data and others. Uh, statistics, and and it was never questioned that we had a need. Uh, but then I think nothing happened, so we started having an emotional response. Like, is it because we've been advocating? Sir, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Your time here this evening. Thank you. Well, I think you give me just give me the benefit of the doubt when you make a mistake sir, about a time, uh, sir. Excuse yeah. me. Yes, yeah. your time is up. Yes. Please, we have a lot of other people that want to be heard. Yeah, I challenge them, but I. I, I, I for the record, gentlemen, um, did uh, Kathy or um, Caitlin Hines? Okay, we'll put that aside. Uh, is it Sarah? Can't read the name. I'll give these to. Um, why don't you come up and get these and see what you can do about identifying whoever those might be. Uh, Malika uh, Medved. Okay. Get it right then. Thank you. And Malika Medved in line? Okay, thank you. Carry on, ma'am, please. Hi, I'm Heidi Chen. H E I D I C H A N. I've been living in Chicago over 50 years, and I have seen a lot of problems in uh, Chinatown area, and also social uh, problems. And now it's come to the school. Where when I saw my friends and uh, some people younger than me, or some nephew or nieces, they finished school, they could not go to a local high school. And they have to travel so far away, more than one hour, more than three, three miles to go, and uh, they have to get up so early. So we have the problem. Uh, Chinatown is already 100 years old, and we've been waiting for about 40 years to get the high school. And now we have a chance to get the, uh, to hear that we have a high, high school. But I'm for that. And I, I agree all the people in this area, they try to have the uh, their kids to go to a quality high school, or and also the length of the uh, traveling. So um, I'm for this because uh, you, when I heard the people say you can go to Philip Dunbar or something, mm -hmm. but when you finish uh, uh, school, will you send your kid Dunbar or Philip or something? Else? Thank, thank you very much to uh, listen to me. Thank, thank you. you very much. Okay, your name, full name, please. My name is Kathy Nien, Kathy, C-E-T-H-Y, N-I-E-N-G. Sorry about what I did to your name. That's okay. Quick okay, carry on. Good evening, Your Honor. Good evening. I'm standing here today to strongly oppose this proposal when I should be in bed recovering from the flu. I am the parent of an MTA student and a 14-year South Loop resident. It's interesting to me that many people who are for this proposal go on and talk about how they are not racist or that this is not a racist plan. So I would like to talk about something that everybody can get behind, and that is traffic, and that is transportation. As a resident who lives north of Roosevelt Road, when my husband and I drive our daughter to and from school, we pass by where the new South Loop School is going to be. There is a Mariano's there. There is also Daystar Elementary School, a private Christian school that is also planning on expanding. Um, because of this, there is going to be a severe traffic and congestion issue in this area. And there's nothing I can do personally to stop this school from being built. But because of this plan, the students from NTA who are going to be displaced are going to be displaced, the youngest ones are going to be displaced to the old building at 1212 South Plymouth. Considering the fact that many students have already been displaced from Ickes and from 
um, and from the, the Hilliard homes um, had the opportunity to walk to NTA and be able to do that. The youngest and most vulnerable, vulnerable of them would have to travel that much further um, without the help of being in the neighborhood and be, having to take public transportation. And um, this is not fair to the students who um, are the most vulnerable and would need the most help to do this. And, and this is one very practical reason that I oppose this plan. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Will Hannah Eckerman uh, get in line, please? Carry on, ma'am. My name is Sarah Strasser, S-A-R-A-S-T-R-A-S-S-E-R. -S 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 um, and I just want to start off by saying good evening and how much I really don't want to be here tonight. Um, my daughter's really sick. She called me crying on the way down here. This has been an enormous strain on my family. Um, the amount of meetings that we have had to attend is something that no family should have to do. But I'm here to talk about how this plan affects my family and families like mine with more than one child. I'm here with a final attempt to get you to listen uh, and to allow me to keep my children together. I have three kids. They're all three years apart. This plan splits my kids apart. My son, in order to stay, he would stay at NTA. My daughter has to go to South Loop and my young child would not be able to go to either one. NTA is the school that my husband and I chose for them. We visited many schools. We ranked NTA number one, um, and we chose NTA. Sometimes people ask why I didn't choose my neighborhood school, and I'm gonna add a small fact here. Um, aside from the fact that they're on their fourth principal in four years, CPS tried to do a very similar thing to my neighborhood school. Last year, they proposed consolidating and overcrowding two majority black schools, one which was my neighborhood school, to relieve overcrowding at a nearby school that just happened to be 85% white. I am trying CPS, but we are really going to become one of those families that are all too familiar in this city, that have given up and left CPS for the sanity of their family. I ask that you not allow this boundary change as it splits apart many families just like mine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, would Nadia Mohare, Maha, Moher, uh, get in line, please? Carry on, ma'am, please. Hi, my name is Milica Medved. That's M I L I C A M E D V E D. My son is in kindergarten at MTA, and I first of all want to say that this proposal is a wrong solution because it's wrong, and it's also the solution for a wrong problem because everybody keeps saying, we need a high school, we need a high school, there is a high school. Everybody has a high school. Okay, so apparently there's a problem with Phillips. Why is there a problem with Phillips? We had the Prairie District Neighborhood Association come on here on record to state that they've been working on this problem since 2006. So that's 12 years. That's 12 years of opportunity to work with CPS, to invest in a neighborhood school, to ask for money and investment. Look at all this energy and all the money and all the investments and all the construction that is involved in this proposal. A lot of grief could have been avoided if that money were invested in Phillips. So there's that. On the other hand, I wanted to put it on record that I have been to NTA to check whether or not that's a good school for my son. And I happened to walk into the open house <laughs> and I looked at the data that was presented and it was really astounding. I have seen the growth charts for students, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, this is neighborhood students, which are growing two or three times more than their projected growth based on the testing standards. That is huge. This is how you pick schools. You don't pick a South Loop school because the students test well. You pick a school where children will grow. And this is what MTA gives their students, uh, an opportunity to grow. Thank you very much. Um, will Noor Mohajir get in line, please? Okay. Do we have Hannah? Will you give your first and last name and spell it for the court reporter, please? Hannah Elamine, H-A-N-N-A-H-E-L hyphen A-M-I-N. I want to speak to the idea or the notion that the results of this proposal are not harmful. The third ward where NTA is housed has had more closures and more displacement of African-American economically disadvantaged students than any other ward in Chicago. 
Research shows that the ill effects of displacement um, began one year before displacement and last up to three years after in terms of attendance, academic performance, and college attendance as well. Merge that data with the fact that many NTA families have already lived through displacement two to three times, including getting kicked out of the very school community that is now asking them to move once again to use our building for their needs, shamelessly and comically cloaking this in writing a wrong. Also, previous mergers in the ward have sh been shown to drop the ratings of well-performing schools, including Persian Elementary. This proposal would serve to create the largest elementary school in the CPS school district, spread across three to four campuses when school size has been shown to adversely affect academic achievement. Achie I know that we have been told that the children are being moved to a better school. Um, or that South Loop Elementary is a better school than NTA. But the achievements at South Loop Elementary are expected from a school with greater economic advantages, access to resources, and no history of the repeated dis destabilization of their education. Compare that to NTA, who has exactly the opposite set of circumstances, which has risen from their lowest possible CPS ranking to the absolute highest possible CPS ranking in just three years. And we are also one of only 18 schools out of, out of over 600 in CPS that serve the African American community with this academic and community profile in this way. One of only 18, I want to state that again. And are we set to take this away? You will hear some voices in support of this proposal, but I want to be, make sure that you're careful to notice that the only support that you hear are those with everything to gain and nothing to lose. Thank you. Thank you very much. And will uh, Saeed Imam get in line, please? And you are? Hi, my name is Nadia Mohajir, N-A-D-I-A-H-M-O-H-A-J-I-R. I am a parent at NTA, and Your Honor, I'm here to express my strong opposition to this plan, and I'm here to tell you that this is not about me being emotional. This is actually about doing what's right. I have three children and have applied to various schools using the central application process for the last eight years. We have had the experience of being registered or enrolled at eight different schools at different times during the last eight years, and we have visited over 26. I have seen the great work that is happening at NTA, which surpasses any of the other schools that we've been at or visited. Not simply just by because of the phenomenal academics, but because of the strong social justice curriculum values that they are exposed to since kindergarten. NTA gives me the hope for not only the kind of citizen my children and their peers will become, but for our the future of this amazing city. I truly believe that tomorrow's activists and public servants will come from National Teachers Academy. Schools like this should be highlighted, replicated, and improved, and not underutilized or closed down. Unfortunately, though, we're here today because CPS has decided it's in the best long-term interest for the Near South community to dismantle this great work that's happening. Your Honor, tonight I ask you, will a new thousand-seat building really serve the needs any better than the existing 4,500 vacant seats? What if CPS added an excellent ESL program in bilingual education at one of these schools? like Kelly High School has been offering to its students from Chinatown for decades? Or why not add an IV program or a STEM partnership with IIT to these underutilized high schools? Invest in the teachers and administration to make these schools more attractive. Our children deserve a better plan. Chicago deserves a better plan. And I stand today with the NTA community in calling a pause for this plan because this proposal should not move forward. We cannot sacrifice a successful school and must find alternatives. Thank you very much. Uh, we're not going to have the student's name, but we have. I have to know. Um, uh, you just spoke, did you not, ma'am? It's my son. Yeah, I understand. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I'm trying to determine. Um, is this Noor? It is not. No, Noor is not. Thank you. This is sad. I'm sorry. It's, it's the other student. Begins with an S. <laughs> okay, let's try that. Student, uh, you're going to be um, student, or s sir, who begins with an S, you're going to be uh, student H. Carry on, please. Hi, I'm a fifth grader at National Teachers Academy. I've been there since first grade. I think that this proposal is a bad idea because it will move a lot of kids and it's already perfect school for too many people. It'll break our community apart. I think community because NTA is more than just a school to us. It's our home, our family. This, are, this includes our amazing principal, Mr. Klasovitz, our inspiring teachers, and our beloved friends. As with all good families, NTA is a source of stability and confidence. We need to learn and grow in school and outside of school. We do this well and deserve to be supported and not torn apart, like how my brother and I will be split between schools. 
I want to also share to you that at NTA we have something called the NTA Way. The NTA Way encourages us to always display courage, commitment, awareness, and integrity. Because of this, even though I used to be a very shy kid, I have, de I have developed the courage to speak up here for my school tonight and show my commitment to my school. In honor of the NTA Way, I want I also ask our school leaders to have awareness to be able to see that this plan is hurtful and have integrity to be able to reject it. Please think of what children do better. We are putting trust in you. I would also like to add in the slogan, we are NTA and NTA here to stay. These might not sound like much, but it demonstrates NTA and its core values. We've spent money that we don't have to promote these slogans that are not to be thrown around just like we would if they pressed the proposal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Bonnie Sanchez Carlson, and then is it is it Bothney Coldor? Council, you may want to see if you can get somebody identified with that, please. Greg McClure, will you get in line, please? Carry on, ma'am. Bonnie Sanchez Carlson, B-O-N-N-I-E, S-A-N-C-H-E-Z hyphen C-A-R-L-S-O-N. Uh, I represent Near South Planning Board, a community-based organization serving the community since 1946. Our organization was uh, deeply concerned about the boundaries for the plan that was presented um, before us. In fact, on August 25th, we provided a letter to CPS questioning the boundaries proposed for the near, near uh, new elementary school. In our letter, we were adamant that the boundaries be extended south. In particular, um, south to include what was the former Ickes housing project, um, so that all the right to return former residents and new students had equitable access to a quality education. In our most recent review of the updated plans, we're pleased to discover that our recommendations are being considered and have been incorporated in the newly released proposal. Um, as I mentioned also in our August 2017 letter, the unprecedented growth of our residential population in the past decade with more units proposed for future development necessitated the call for a public high school to serve the community. In reviewing the recent changes made to the, to the plan and the extension of the boundaries noted in said plan, Near South Planning Board supports the newest version uh, of this plan. Thank you very much. Uh, will Mike or Mick Lockwood and Tara Lockwood get in line, please? And before we go any farther, um, uh, Rochelle McGee, you still in the room? Yes. Yeah. Um, on the on the card itself, uh, one of the one of the rules is that you cannot cede your time. So if you'd like to take your time, whenever in the next couple of minutes, I'll put you in. Okay or we'll hold you to the end, but you can't cede your time. You. Carry on, sir. I am Greg McClure, G-R-E-G-G-M-C, uppercase C-L-U-R-E. Good evening. Good evening. To the NTA staff, students, parents, and our supporters, I applaud and I celebrate you. You took the fight to the very doorsteps of the hidden figures that have drawn up these new boundaries. The city and this neighborhood in which NTA thrives is in the spotlight, but be careful, though. I was once told that all publicity is not good publicity. I stand here in disappointment. I am disappointed for believing in my city, my mayor, the third war alderman, and everyone that is involved with the decision of kicking out our children of, from NTA. I mean, kudos to those that are considered the powers that be, or the people with the money to influence. Your point was proven. Maybe instead of teaching my children, they're going to school every day and doing the best in class and in your community and being the best person that you can be is simply not enough. I need to teach them that their money and the people that they form their allegiances with is what really matters. I gambled five years ago when I chose NTA for my son, not on the school, but on CPS. You see, my parents were onto something back in 1980 when they decided to send me to Catholic school, Kingdom College. It wasn't because we were devout Catholics. It was about, and it wasn't about the quality of the education, but it was about the instability, the political influence, and the questioning of the true plight of, of our city schools. I now get it. NTA was never built for the inhabitants that are in there today. NTA was targeted since 2010 as an important asset to 
others. My time is splitting up. I implore the appointed board to make history today and vote down the measure that CPS leadership is presenting. This is the only way to right this wrong. Leave the NTA children and community be. We've only shined up the jewel that has been sitting in the rough. Thank you here, very much. And we only want to Lewis Makarowicz, if you'd get in line, please. Mr. Lockwood. Good evening, Your Honor. My name is Mark Lockwood, M-A-R-K-L-O-C-K-W-O-O-D. And I thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak with you this evening. Uh, throughout these proceedings, the NTA families have been characterized as loud, rowdy, even hateful. I'm here to tell you today, Your Honor, that we are not hateful. Uh, I would like to ask you to come to NTA for yourself and see the love that is at NTA. It's a very impressive place. We can sit here all night and talk till we're blue in the face about how wonderful NTA is. I wish you would take the opportunity to stop by and see for yourself. Uh, it's very troubling tonight to hear the members who are in favor uh, of this motion to speak about NTA as if it's a vacant building. Uh, they are right when they say that it is a very valuable asset and the asset is inside the walls. Um, so I want to be clear, we're only here for one fundamental reason. We're here to defend against the closure of a level one plus Chicago public school that serves mostly black, low income children. That's it. We're here to defend against the closure of a level one plus CPS school. I, I don't know if that sounds odd to you, but I, I, it's hard for me to wrap my mind around that. I want to let you know I've been coming here for weeks and weeks and weeks. I object to the hostile takeover of my son's school. I object to being dragged into this contentious situation unwillingly. I object to the CPS leaders using NTA to divide these Chicago communities. Uh, we love our uh, community uh, members in, in uh, Chinatown and in South Loop and in Bridgeport. I object to the mayor going on TV and heaping praise upon Forrest Claypool. Sir, thank you very much for your time. should be on praising Tara NTA. Lockwood, please. Good evening, uh, Tara, T-A-R-A, Lockwood. Um, L-O-C-K-W-O-O-D. Justice Lady. Thank yes. you. Um, I'm here to read a letter that was written um, to the Chicago Board of Education of the Chicago Public Schools. Um, by the parents of students in National Teachers Academy's Regional Gifted Center. But I'd like to make clear <clears throat> that we, that isn't a distinction I'm generally comfortable making. For the most part, my child is just another student at NTA. Um, however, CPS makes that distinction. So it is on our behalf, I'd like to say, we are writing to address the current proposal to change the South Loop attendance boundary and convert National Teachers Academy into a neighborhood high school for the South Loop community. This would also involve moving or phasing out NTA's RGC. We strongly disagree with this effort and urge you not to move forward with a plan that we made for our children's education were deliberate. For many of us, this started with visiting different regional gifted centers across the city, registering and testing our children, and carefully ranking schools. We talked with teachers, administrators, and parents, and subsequently selected NTA as the best choice for us. We had other options. We could have gone with re to different regional gifted centers, high performing magnets, or neighborhood programs. But we chose NTA knowing that unlike some other Chicago RGCs, it is a school that puts RGC students and neighborhood students together for lunch, recess, and enrichment. This was important to us as we saw the school that was racially, socially, socially, economically, and religiously diverse. Also, the level of academic rigor at NTA is second to none, and NTA has high expectations for students, both academically and socially. We ask that you keep our NTA's growing RGC intact, adding a kindergarten class each year until each grade have an RGC, so that we continue to remain a part of the NTA. Thank you very much. Will Jasmine Harris please get in line, and Donetta Jones behind her? Thank you. Sir. Good evening, Your Honor. Uh, Louis Makarevich, L-O-U-I-S-M-A-K-A-R-E-W-I-C-Z. 
And here's one of the representatives from Chicago United for Equity, or otherwise known as Q, which recently produced community reports and racial equity analysis on the NCA question. I also was one of the authors of that community report and was also a facilitator of the racial equity analysis that engaged over 300 participants from impacted communities over three town hall sessions over the past couple of months. Some major community concerns that made themselves uh, repeatedly apparent included unequal benefits to burdens on low-income students of color who have uh, been at, uh, accepting the burden of the sacrifice uh, in this question uh, in service of advantages which are largely uh, taken over by more affluent peers. Uh, additional concerns highlight the displacement of students, especially within the context of historical legacies of sco uh, school closures in Chicago, as well as a disproportionate impact on poor communities of those closures. Messaging sent by shutting down a one-plus rated program, especially given that existing programs such as Dunbar and Phillips are currently available and have the potential to be strengthened. Uh, was of additional concern for participants. Alternative proposals exist, including moving NTA to new independent facilities, investing in strengthening existing high schools, including Dunbar and Phillips, selling the old South Loop facilities to generate up to $35 million in capital funding for a new high school, redistributing selective enrollment seats from Jones College Prep and moving on to Phillips and Tilden, and five, housing South Loop's K through sixth in their current facility and expanding the seventh through twelfth grades in the new building at 16th and Dearborn, allowing NTA to persist at its current location. Thank you very much. Alternative proposals exist. The community hopes that they are considered. Thank you very much. Uh, will Jermaine Cade get in line, please? Is this Jasmine? Yes. Okay, and you're a student? Yes. Okay, bring that microphone down. <laughs> I am a third grader at NTA. I don't want you to co to take my school away because I have I had to, the best time at NTA. I learned reading, science, swimming, and math. My school is a level one plus school, and I don't want to lose it. I love the way my classmates are so nice. They made our school a level one plus school. My teacher taught me a lot of things and I don't want that to go away. Please don't take my school away, please. Thank you very much. Will Karen Wong um, get in line, please? Did Jermaine get in line? Pardon? She's gone. She's gone? Yeah. Thank you very much, appreciate that. Oh. In line, please. Carry on, ma'am. Hi, my Hi. name is Donetta Jones, D-E-N-E-T-T-A-J-O-N-E-S. Um, I have two students at NTA, I'm in parents at NTA parent, and in 2013, they were displaced from the previous school, and the new school that they attended did not bode well for them. They both had academic and emotional problems, I know from experience. They would get frustrated, I would get frustrated. And my prayers were answered when I moved to 2030 South State because NTA is right across the street. I take my, when I registered them, I had such the nicest time registering because the staff is just, the staff of NTA is phenomenal. My daughters went from being D's and F students to A's and B's. And they love the school, they love the students there, they love their teachers. My youngest daughter gives everyone a hug at this school. <laughs> and I just, I'm begging you not to, please do not close this school. Because my daughters have already been through an emotional trauma being displaced from one school. I do not want them to go through that again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you I'm are? I'm Karen Wong. Okay, and will, excuse me for one minute, will Ben Shanbaum uh, get in line, please? Thank you. Go ahead. Okay, that's, uh, my name is Karen Wong, spelled W-O-N-G. I'm a lifelong Chinatown Bridgeport resident and attended CPS schools throughout my entire educational career. 
I'm here to speak to Chinatown's need for a neighborhood high school. I think the greatest need that the high school would address is the issue of language access or lack thereof in our community. Now, I was lucky enough to test into Walter Payton College Prep, but a lot of my family members were not as fortunate. My cousin Alex, for instance, immigrated from China to start his sophomore year of high school in Chicago. He did not place into any selective enrollment high school and enrolled at a South Side neighborhood high school. Class material was already difficult on its own, but was even harder for Alex to follow due to the fact that the class was taught in the English language, which he was not well versed in at all, just having immigrated from China a month ago before school started. With no access to language support, he started falling behind and was too embarrassed to ask for help or raise his hand in class. He eventually stopped attending class altogether. The weight of the new material he had to learn, coupled with the inability to understand the language the classes were taught in in the first place, led him to drop out of high school his junior year. That was 2011. Today, it's even harder for our kids. Now that there is a rigorous tier system, ESL and ELL children who live in tier three but do not actually have the socioeconomic privilege of tier three must reach impossible standards to get into schools that meet their needs. This is why language access is important. Chinese students deserve an equal opportunity at doing well and succeeding in school, even if English is not their first language. Furthermore, language access is almost import also important because bilingual language accommodation is important for parents to get involved in their children's education. My parents are small business owners in Chinatown who have always worked until late at night and still do. They simply aren't able to attend community meetings like this, and even if they did, the language barrier would serve as a huge obstacle, preventing them from ever speaking out and taking a stand much like all of you guys are doing today. We don't have that same privilege. There's a reason I'm the only the fourth person in Chinatown to speak out tonight. This high school will serve as a step in the right direction of ending the cycle of perpetuating the language barrier. It shouldn't stop here either. With Chinatown's- Thank you so much for being here tonight. We want um, something to- Remain, Kay, yeah. and will Chris Johnson get in the line, please? Good evening, my name is Jermaine Cade, spelled G-E-R-M-A-Y-N-E. -E. The last name is Cade. C-A-D-E. I stand here before you, Your Honor, in strong support of maintaining National Teachers Academy as an elementary school. And I am vehemently opposed to converting it or transforming it into a high school. There are people who have asked me that are not familiar with NTA. Jermaine, your son has access. He has choices. Why do you care so much? A couple reasons. One, because one child is not the sum of a population of a school. Two, because NTA has values that we live by. The fact that Principal Castellas holds not only the staff and teachers accountable, he holds the students and the parents accountable. He leads with transparency, and we all collectively as a community have come together to make the school what it is today. And I think thirdly, because it's a case of have and have nots and right or wrongs. So I've listened to when we talk about, we've developed a plan, but when one party of the plan has started developing it years before the other party is privileged to it, it's not right. And so I think, Your Honor, you are on the precipice. I liken you to Chief Justice Earl Warren. You are in a place where you're gonna have to make a decision. You're gonna have to make a decision that may be unpopular on the side of politics, but it is the right thing to do when you look at the transcripts and what you've heard today. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, I wish I was getting a salary too. <laughs> Debbie Lynn, would you get in line please? Carry on, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Ben Shanbaum, S-H-A-N-B-A-U-M. I'm the father and parent of a child attending South Loop and a child attending NTA. I've spent years of my life and several gray hairs on my beard working with the South Loop community to try to help address its overcrowding problem. And I am vehemently opposed to the solution that has been put forth. It's bad. It manages to be a non-solution to an imminent catastrophe to just about everybody involved. First, it's clearly bad for NTA. Uh, now, you've heard plenty of people talking here, and it's not the fancy brickwork and the class windows, the lockers, it's not that that makes NTA what it is. It's the hard work and devotion and dedication and purpose of the people who are working there, of Mr. Castellas, the principal, Mrs. Riffenberg, who you heard from earlier today, that make that school, that have turned that school from level three to level one plus in four years. It's bad for the South Loop community because, as 
I said before, we've spent years and years fighting an overcrowding problem that has clearly resulted in sacrifices I've witnessed firsthand for my daughter. And we end up with a solution that just puts a new school at capacity, potentially over capacity from day one, with the potential it's only going to get worse. And it's really not a solution for those who are seeking a good high school. Now this is a tempting apple that has been thrown in the direction of this neighborhood. However, we have to look at the, the numbers and the demographics. NTA is a building can house 250 to 300 people per grade level. Right now, it's being promised to 500 people per grade level in the guaranteed spot, another 150 per grade level in the preference boundary, and another 350 people per grade level in nearby private schools. It's not a solution for anybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Ivy Lamb, if you'd get in line, please. Is, uh, you are Chris Johnson? Is Chris Johnson in the room? <coughs> Johnson? You're Debbie Lynn? Uh, Lou, L-I-U. Oh, I'm sorry. Would you be good enough to spell your first and last name? Yeah, D-E-B-B-I-E-L-I-U. So I've been able to witness CPS as, as its best, as a proud alum of Peyton College Prep, and at its worst when limiting public education from those who need it. I grew up with three younger sisters. One of the sisters uh, worked hard but struggled with test taking. She, was, she wasn't able to grasp the topics as quickly as her peers. Overall, she was just a B student. And she did her best, but she was not matched with her chosen selective enrollments. So my parents enrolled her in private school uh, at CLSL. I remember she cried for days, wondering why she wasn't good enough after receiving the rejection letter. But this story is not uncommon for many residents in Greater Chinatown. CPS should not be in the business of only educating or especially educating high achievers. Average students like my sisters, new immigrants who barely speak English and have other issues, um, deserve an opportunity to reach college and to reach the top echelons of society. However, for residents of Armistar and Bridgeport growing up in an elementary school that is rated one plus but are left with two or lower nearby options, it is no wonder that families are sending their kids to private schools or moving out of the community altogether. So this NTA conversion is the first serious attempt by CPS to address the long-term serious need of Chinatown. While this plan is beneficial for Greater Chinatown, NTA does stand the, stand the most to lose. So should this unprecedented proposal pass, thoughtful and considerable long-term and transparent district-wide district planning should accompany this and future plans. Thank you. Thank you very much. And would uh, Angela, Lou, or Lynn, are you okay? And also, will uh, Hongbo Wong please get in line as well? Go ahead, please. Your Honor, uh, my name is Ivy Lam, L A M. Um, well, we we all have a long day uh, today, and uh, especially we saw a lot of like NTA's student and parents, and we respect you know everybody's uh, thought. And actually, I've been sacrificed for two of my kids, which is back to 1999, because of the high school issue, I made the decision to moving away from Chicago to West, West, West suburb. But since my kids, when they're still in um, elementary school, because they're 18 months apart, my daughter and my son, and my daughter really want to say, Mommy, I really want to, to be with my, my, my brother, little brother, in the same school. So we decided to move. Of course, I understand not that many you know, parents can afford to move away from their, their homeland in Chinatown, especially me, myself. I have to work in Chinatown, so I have to drive every day 45 minutes. And my husband have to drive over two hours to his work. But after that, the main thing is my kids been lost their childhood friends from elementary school. They have to build their relationship and new friends in their high school. And when they come back to uh, Chinatown, and they lost all the connection. And even my daughter just get married, and when he, she came back from New York, she asked me, Mommy, you, we still don't have high school in our neighborhood? I say, yeah. 
So thank you very much. And this is just my experience and, and I'm favor on um, CBS uh, proposal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, would uh, uh, Gioji, you get in line, please? Carry on, please. Hi, um, good evening. I'm Angela Lin, spelled A-N-G-L-A, based L-I-N. <clears throat> I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator for CBCC, the Coalition for Better Chinese American Community, which is a political advocacy and community development organization in Chinatown. Despite the Chinese having lived in this area for over 100 years, Chinatown still has needs that are not met and have historically been pushed to later dates. This is not just schools. For example, Hardin Square and Stanford Park were the only recreational facilities that serviced Chinatown for a long time. They were torn down in 1962 when the Dan Ryan Expressway was being built, which also split Chinatown um, in two and That was pretty devastating. Um, in the, it, and it wasn't replaced until 2000. In the, next, in the 40 years that Chinatown was neglected, other park investments were popping up in the rest of Chicago. Um, this neglect applies to schools as well. Chinatown was zoned into Phillips and Tilden's in the 60s at a time when there were clear racial lines that were never crossed. Um, since the 20s, there was Italian on the square to the, um, to the right, Irish Bridge, uh, Bridgeport to the left, and the Black Belt, as it was called, um, to the south. And if you cross any of these lines, you get beaten up. And even in the lines, many Chinese were still harassed. Half a century later, after race dynamics, City layout and immigration policies have changed Chinatown and Chicago so much. The high school assignments um, have not changed to accommodate the ongoing flux of immigrants who are the backbone of the residential and economic um, community. So we surveyed like a bunch of, I'm, I'm, I'm running out of time, but we surveyed 2,000 residents in 2012 for their needs and education was um, one of the highest. And we've been going to all the um, NTA meets and racial equity analyses and it's really like really touching to see um, the strength that they show and even though they've been displaced so many times and Chinatown hasn't really been displaced but it has been neglected and we do need um, a high school that fits the language access needs of our community. Thank you very much. Um, Rochelle, do you, do you want to get in line to um, give your comments now? Thank you. Okay, carry on. Hi, uh, my name is Hong Wong Wang, last name W-A-N-G. I'm a, and spell your first name. Okay, H-O-N-G-B-O. Thank you. Carry on. Um, I'm a community activist. Um, as an educator and a parent, I always strongly, strongly believe that all the children are equal <clears throat> and all the children deserve to receive the best education they should. Um, Children or all the students in Chinatown community definitely deserve a high quality neighborhood school, neighborhood high school. And, uh, but the more, you know, town hall meeting I went and the sadder I feel because I gradually realized that the satisfaction of one group means sadness of another group. Uh, that means when people in one group get something, means another group will lose some benefit. I don't think it's fair. And I know CPS um, is very resourceful and uh, very uh, creative. I believe CPS is able to find a solution which will meet the needs of both communities. Thank you. And will uh, Wong Lu get in line, please? Carry on. Hi, Hi. Uh, I'm a student from Cali, and I'm a junior this year. Okay, hold so on. So it's been a <coughs> hold on, just just one moment. Don't start her time yet. So it's been it's been over like several hours, and I have a final tomorrow. So I'll go quick. So um, the last time I spoke is a year ago, and this like this school thing is not done over a year. So I really want to um, say something based on my experience uh, of Kelly's school life. <coughs> and it's not a bad school, but it also provide bilingual program. 
but I really want to um, like have a high school in Chinatown is because the immigrants is keep coming and Kelly is over containing like it, there's so many Chinese and new people keep coming and I think the school is really like out of control sometimes so um, I don't think that Chinatown High School is not is a bad idea and and further, I want also want the future immigrant can receive higher education. So, I really want the, the high school of China can um, have the higher quality education. By the way, like Chinatown is a really awkward location. Kelly is really far away, and I have to get up at six every morning to get to school on time. So for me, I really encourage this school like I think this thing this work is working for the future immigrants future high school students uh, who are, uh, who is now going to Haynes or Jansburg because it's not a bad bad thing and the location will be really this for the future immigrants thank you thank you very much and will um, Liren Liang I hope I pronounced that did I pronounce it close Okay, get in line, please, and thank you. Ma'am, if you will. Shall I state my name again? Yes, please. Rochelle McGee, R O C H E L L E, last name M C, capital G E E. My statement is that the boundary for the school should include the people that actually paid to build the school initially. Our community would like to have the boundary for NTA to include the TIF. This neighborhood high school option is very good for the community. Your Honor, please consider the expansion of the boundary. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, did Wong Lao, Wong Lao, it looks like LAU, is that you? Are you a student? Okay. Carry on, sir. Are you a student, sir? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm a freshman in Kelly High School and a graduate from um, James Ford Elementary School. I came from China in 2016. English is not my first language, so going to school here has been difficult. The word of one people told me that Kelly High School had a bilingual program, therefore many recent immigrants like myself often end up attending there. I took a 62 archer bus from Chinatown to get to school. My commute is about 40 minutes, but it's not the school I am soon for. Although I attend Kelly, I do not like the school as when I was in China. Students work very hard to excel in every class. I feel the school environment here is different. At Kelly, I noticed that a lot of students were not learning and even skipping class. In my class, students are noisy and I cannot listen to my teacher clearly, making it more difficult to learn as I do not understand English as well as my peers. Also, the fellows facility is not as clean. Outside of the school, students would smoke near the bus stop and would litter, litter too. This makes it hard for me to learn and stay motivated in school. None of this would have been acceptable back home and my parents would worry about my future education, but I will still strive for the best. I wish for a school where this environment is safe and filled with hardworking students and staff who understand the needs, needs of immigrant kids as well. I want a school to prepare students for the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Will Aaron Sanders and David Shapiro get in line, please? Okay. Student L, carry on. I'm a freshman from Lane Tech. College Prep High School and I graduated from J4 Elementary School. I spent over 40 minutes going to school now compared to a minute walk when I went to James Ward. I've been hearing that NTA is a great school and it should not be taken down for a new high school for the Bridgeport neighborhood. However, I feel bad and I don't know what else I could do. All I know is that Chinatown has been asking for a high school for many years and it is unfair that people are repeatedly putting this 
need a side. I hope CPS can make a decision with best reasoning. Thank you. Thank you. And will Simon Shu, will you get in line, please? Yes, sir. Carry on. Aaron Sanders, S A N D E R S. I'm a parent of two scholars at National Teachers Academy. Um, and, Your Honor, I come before you. I know you're relatively new to the process, but I've been going to these uh, various events for a fairly long time. And as someone who works in the business community in Chicago, I have to say um, I am extremely disappointed with the way that the administration, uh, the way that Chip Johnson has managed the process uh, with respect to the interaction between the different interested parties in this particular process. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the process for a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds actually. This process has effectively divided four different neighborhoods and all of the interested parties in it. And I blame Chip Johnson, I blame Janice Jackson, I blame Alderman McDowell behind me for exactly creating the situation that you have here. Most of the Chinatown residents, as I've come to understand, badly do need uh, their own neighborhood high school. But they're not actually getting that out of this process. And they were never really contemplated as part of the process either. Neither, for that matter, were the residents within South Loop. You've only heard from one individual within South Loop who's actually described this plan as a good one for him, and it is, because his kids happen to be in seventh grade right now. Okay, so that means that they can immediately jump into this new NTA high school. Everyone else that you've heard from, the Alderman, Tina Feldstein, um, the other interested parties from, from uh, South Loop who've come into the town halls, they all have other interests at heart, not necessarily for any of the kids there. And you haven't heard anything like this from those parents. Lastly, I want to talk a little bit about the high school. Someone's already described the numbers, the, the situation we have here. I happen to work in numbers. The math here really doesn't work, Your Honor. There's over 2,400 individuals. We're only going to talk about 2,000 because of uh, public schools. There's only, uh, there's only going to be 1,200 seats for these individuals. I urge you to reject this plan. Take Thank it back you, to the board. Thank you. Uh, will Maya Cicero please get in line? And also Myra Romero. Carry on, sir. Good evening, Your Honor. My name is David Shapiro, S H A P I R O. I am the proud father of a first grader at National Teachers Academy. Um, obviously, a whole range of problems with the CPS proposal have been identified tonight. The one I'd like to focus on. Uh, is that it is reckless and profoundly irrational uh, in the sense that it is sacrificing two known and proven institutions uh, based upon the idea that it will create a fantastic uh, new school in South Loop and a great new high school. But the fact is that these hypothetical future institutions are, no one knows if they're going to be any good. That's a purely speculative assertion. Um, CPS ought to know that you don't just open a school and be able to assume that it's going to be great. But all of the comments that we've heard in favor of this new high school are just assuming that in a profoundly irrational manner. Meanwhile, an assumption is also being made that you combine National Teachers Academy and South Loop Elementary into a single school that that's going to be smooth. Who knows? It could be a total failure, as evidenced uh, by, by the, the, the other comments that have been made about uh, larger schools uh, being uh, generally less successful. This is a classic example of the idea that rational people don't trade uh, a, a bird in the hand for one in the bush. We're talking about shutting down but profoundly transforming to extremely successful one-plus level institutions and replacing them with a total unknown. That is not a rational choice. That is not the sort of recklessness that is appropriate with children. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. And, uh, and Rakia Williams, if you'd get in line for that. Go ahead, sir. Hi. Um, my name is Simon Siu, S-I-M-O-N. SHIU. I will live in the Bridgeport area for 45 years. I'm uh, uh, my Kiko Rahili. I'm an LC member and uh, and a PAC chairman. And uh, we have a hundred 
we have 1,500 students over there. And then uh, I, I, I got uh, my master's degree is a DePaul in higher education. Okay, so higher education is built from the ground to up. Right now we start over here because when the Healy grade, grade eight students graduate, they cannot go anywhere. Some students are smart, they can go to Zedek at the moment, but some students is not. Just like my neighborhood, they are Spanish, Italian, Italy, or uh, they have different country people who live in my block. But the thing is, they, they are frustrated trying to find a good high school for their own kids. And then they say for the PD, we, the center within a mile, like it doesn't matter go east, west, south, north. I'm hitting the elementary school. I didn't hit any high school at all. I come here for 45 years ago. I was frustrated for the high school. I go far away, about at least an hour per day. In the winter time, it's about one and a half hour to two hours, one way. If I can spend those time to study, instead of playing the game or study traffic, I can be, go for the PhD. But right now I'm stuck there, okay? And then uh, I, I know that NTA is a limited seat for all the elementary schools. So my proposal is to say, go for it and then build a second NTA. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, is this Maya? And Maya is a student? Yes. Okay. This is student uh, L. Jim. You had L already. Uh, okay, hold on. <laughs> You're quite right. You are student M. Okay, carry on, student M. Hello, I am a second grade grader at NTA. I love NTA a lot, so we need to keep it open. One reason is because if NTA turns into a high school, all of the teachers at NTA will lose their jobs. Also, if NTA turns into a high school, I probably will never see all my friends again. And plus, there are a lot of enrichment classes that I enjoy, so please, CPS, please do not convert NTA into a high school. Thank you. Are you Mayra? My, yes, Maya. Okay, and spell your first and last name. It is. M A Y. Excuse me for a second. I apologize. I asked you to do something. I'm speaking over you. Yes. Is Rakia Williams? Is Rakia Rakia Williams present? And. Is it Jennifer Sill? She left. She, she left. She did? She left. Okay. Uh, Chris Heck? Hacker. Okay, would you get in line, please? And uh, Anna, uh, Adonia James? Adonia James? Okay, carry on, please. Good evening, Your Honor. My name is Maida, M-A-Y-R-A. -A. Last name is Romero, R-O-M-E-R-O. -E I am a proud NTA parent of a second grader. All her teachers and staff are outstanding. I know her teacher works long hours, including weekends, because she cares about her students. Everyone there had, everyone there has very high standards for all students. NTA is a level one plus. Why close a top level school? It is not fair for NTA students. There are other options. Some parents have complained about their teenagers commute, having to take one to two buses or trains. I also took one to two buses or walked for blocks to avoid taking two buses. It's just for four years. That's just what people do here in Chicago to go to school. Most of the people took at least one bus, whether it was a neighborhood or selective enrollment school. I also, I don't want my young daughter to be in the same building with 14 to 18 year old boys. 
please do not close NTA. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is it Adawa James? Adawa James? Matuso Marky? Could you get in line, please? Uh, Alex Ow? AU? Alex Ow? Carry on, sir, please. Good evening, Your Honor. My name is Chris Hacker, H-A-C-K-E-R. First off, thank you for keeping the session open. You're welcome. Uh, I don't envy your position. My grandfather, uh, Edgar Jones, served as a labor arbitrator for over 50 years, and as Judge Jones on television in the late 50s into the early 60s. And he shared many stories about the challenge that he faced during the times that he had to decide against <clears throat> the company, in the case of labor arbitration, uh, that had chosen him due to the scene that the martial facts that presented were presented uh, to him, independent of the ever-present emotional realities. There are practical issues that have been discussed tonight. I want to highlight three of them. Uh, as a parent uh, of a what will be a rising fourth grader, who will be uh, as part of the RGC uh, in the uh, under the plan uh, combined hybrid school. The first thing is is overcrowding. The boundaries is, and we keep hearing people or keep asking for them to be expanded. Aside from that. The model that CPS has used assumes that the retention rate for the local you know, people to attend their neighborhood school will remain the same as it is now with underperforming <coughs> schools. But the goal here is to produce a high performing school, which if in fact they do that, that retention rate will go up. Those 500 kids that can only seat, where we can only seat 250 to 300 kids is gonna get, go way over the top. The second issue is just spoken about is having my fourth grader uh, sharing schools with kids four to six years older than him. The last issue that I you know, want to raise with the situation, you know, with respect to the, the plan, is that the, um, sorry, my screen didn't cooperate. The, the investment options talked about with respect to Phillips have been our, our false choice. You know, there have been facilities investments, not anything else. This is a closure. The policies and procedures haven't been followed. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, your name, sir, please? Matsuo Marty. Okay. Would you spell the first and last name, please? M-A-T-S-U-O. Last name is Marty, M-A-R-T-I. Thank you. Carry on, please. Two Chicago's. CPS promises a commitment to every child from every community, but do they really? Where else been in Chicago would a school board close a top-rated school, transforming the lives of black students? Two Chicago's. Where else been in a city CNN reported as the most segregated in the nation would a school board close a school where black students grow more than 75% of students nationwide? Two Chicago's. Where else been in a city that the term hypersegregation was created to describe would a school board identify the same exact school as not high quality for more affluent, more powerful families and high quality for less affluent, less powerful Anglewood families? Two Chicago's. Where else but in a city divided by the have and have nots? Would a school board change the rules for school actions to include unnamed requests as a trigger to intentionally close a high performing school? Two Chicago's. Where else but in a city known for the Chicago way? Would a school board claim a lack of city funds to build necessary resources, yet have money for a new police academy, new sports arena, and a new Ferris wheel? Two Chicago's. A limiting eliminating NTA in order to provide a high quality school option for people that are more fluent and more powerful continues to prove that all men aren't created equal. Chicago has a long history of providing, proving we don't actually live the promise of the Declaration of Independence. Two Chicago's, demand a just Chicago, get woke and black students matter. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Um, I do not have any other cards uh, in front of me for anybody who has signed up to be heard this evening. I will state, or I will call these names again to see if somehow uh, somebody has gotten passed over. Is it Botney? It looks like B A T H N I. Um, Tolden, T O L D O N. Chris Johnson. Rakia, R E K E I A. Williams. Uh, Adawa, A D O W A Jones, or James, excuse me. 
Looks like Jennifer uh, S-I-L-L Sill or S-I-L-K. And Alex Au, A-U, Alex Au. This concludes the um, uh, presentation of the uh, evidence on behalf of the CPS and the comments on behalf of the community. Uh, I want to remind you that the uh, record in this case will remain open until tomorrow, Tuesday, January 30th at 5 p.m. Uh, you can submit written materials you want me to consider and make part of the record until that time. And you can either hand deliver those uh, materials to the attention of CPS Law Department at 42 West Madison, or by using email, uh, using the following email address, transitions, T-R-A-N-S-I-T-I-O-N-S, at cps.edu. I want to thank everybody who's um, present still in the room, um, especially uh, the members of the audience, uh, for taking your time. There are a few things more important to us than the than the work that was done here tonight in terms of the next generation, who are the future for all of us. So I thank you for your dedication, your time for being here and sharing your thoughts. Um, at this time, um, we will show that it is 946. There are no further speakers or no other evidence to come before this uh, hearing, uh, no other business to come before this hearing, and therefore I close this public hearing again with thanks. You